Our values are like the wily game of golf itself. How we think about it shapes how it works. You could think I'm going to walk into my dream today. 15-year-old Lydia Ko attempting to be the first amateur to win on the LPGA since 69. Or you could think I'm already living the dream. Number one all season, Stacy Lewis wants to be player of the year. An American, it would be the first time since 1994. A pair of dreamers, two flights of fancy. One of them woke up this morning thinking, I'm enough. The CN Canadian Women's Open on CBC. Brought to you by CN. Conducted by Golf Canada in association with the LPGA Tour. Final round of the CN Canadian Women's Open from the beautiful Vancouver Golf Club in Coquitlam, British Columbia as the crow flies 20 kilometers. Judy, it's about 14 miles from downtown Vancouver, slightly to the east of Vancouver, which is on the Pacific Ocean here in the beautiful supernatural province of British Columbia. Over 100 seasons have come and gone since the industrious pioneers transformed the orchards and pastures of Austin Farm into Vancouver Golf Club. Your heritage, your vocation, your gender, none of that mattered. Anyone could sign up. And from that moment, it was game on. A wicked challenge, a warm welcome awaited you right here at Vancouver Golf Club. And it's all about the game, and it's all about golf. And in this case, it's all about that beautiful trophy and Judy Rankin, the Hall of Famer. Could you see yourself on the Canadian Open trophy? Well, Judy can. There she is, uh, looking like Paula Creamer in 1977 when Judy captured this event, of course, at La Chute and 26-time winner. So we have a wonderful story brewing here on uh, the final day, Judy. We have Lydia Ko, the 15-year-old from New Zealand, trying to be the first amateur to win on the LPGA Tour since Joanne Carner. What do you think? She is a fascinating story. She is a beautiful golfer to watch. But what we have today is we have a great day. We have a, a golf course that is beautifully manicured. It's almost 6,700 yards. A lot of the best players in the game are uh, right at Lydia Ko's heels. And she might do this, but she won't do it in an easy fashion. These players are going to make their mark today and try not to have a 15-year-old beat them. $2 million purse, 300000 normally, Judy. You say they have nothing to lose these Kid. She has nothing to win, effectively, other than the beautiful trophy and all that goes along with the, the exemptions, etc. But there she is. Well, she's as nice and sweet as she can be, and she looks like a very experienced player when she is on the golf course. Beautiful golf swing, wonderful touch. Um, if there was any sort of uh, weakness yesterday, it was a little bit on the greens um, when the pressure was on. And that is understandable whether you're 15 or 55. Well, you were telling me a story, Judy, when she uh, won at New South Wales this year, which is on the Australian Tour. I want to clarify, yesterday said the European Tour. It's the Australian Tour. She won as a 14-year-old this year, and Brooke Henderson subsequently beat that by winning on the Canadian Tour uh, this year. But the year before, as a 13-year-old, she almost won that same event and uh, messed up on the final hole. And she would have had she not three-putted. So I think that's going to be the key for Lydia today. When you're very nervous, um, standing up with a driver, that thing teed up high and you're going to take a rip, is not that hard to do for a very good player. But sometimes a three and four foot putt, it is hard to do. Sometimes that 30 foot putt, just to roll it close to the hole, is a lot harder than it was on Tuesday. As I mentioned, it won't be about the money for her. The 300,000 would bump down. It's the top yeah. professional will get that 300,000. So you could actually get that for finishing second. Stacy Lewis, obviously she's uh, got designs on Rolex Player of the Year and trying to be the first since Beth Daniel to win it. Now, she says, Judy, the final five holes here at Vancouver Golf Club, which are all par four, are going to seal the deal today. Well, what's made the deal to this point, um, if you just look at those last five holes, is Lydia Ko has played them better than anyone else near the top of the leaderboard. Lydia Ko has played those last five holes in three under par. Stacy Lewis has played them two over par. So there would have to be a turnaround in that today um, for this finish to work in favor of Stacy Lewis. All par fours, all pretty testy holes, but all holes where if you drive the ball well, you just might hit it close to the hole. So uh, interesting to watch, but the other thing to watch, and we've already talked about the difficulty of putting when the pressure's on, are these greens. Um, there's a lot of slope in these greens. Uh, you rarely get the straight putt, and if you get up above the hole extremely fast, and if you're down below the hole, uh, the speed of the green changes dramatically, and we have seen players 
players struggle with that this week. And if you've been following along, Brian Alexander, a club member here, is Lydia Coe's caddy, a 63-year-old who knows uh, these greens are the great equalizer. He's been terrific. Okay, let's get you caught up on some of the action so far here on the fourth and final round, and we'll begin at the first hole with NB Park. Three major winners are chasing Lydia Coe right now, and this is a birdie putt for her on the first today. And you have to say, uh, NB Park has had the hot hand the last few months. Uh, she has played so consistently well and won just recently at Evian. Six top ten finishes in a row, and as you mentioned, that victory here on the first, G.A. Shin with her second shot. Trying to get back to the form that she had when for a pretty good period of time a couple years ago she was number one in the world. And G.A.'s in that group with Lydia Ko and Stacey Lewis going out today as the front runners. So there's the birdie that took her to minus eight. On the second hole, Anna Norquist, who like Anna Kassornstam from her homeland, made her first victory a major victory. When she gets her ears pinned back, look out, and here's her approach on the second hole. Excellent shot um, at two. So she'd have that for a birdie to go to five under par at that point in the action. Still on the second hole, Chella Choi. Chella's playing alongside NB Park and with Sydney Michaels, who's his neat story here today. But here's Chella for birdie. This creates a four-way tie for the lead at eight under par. Had that great round of 64 in the second round on Friday and uh, was a little bit slow yesterday. Couldn't quite match the 64, but still in the game. Now the computer shooter, the 15-year-old at two. Well, you just have to love this tee to green game. Little tap in for a birdie to get back to full control of the lead at nine under par. Another threat to Lydia Ko today will be Nayan Choi, the U.S. Open champion. Struggled after a wonderful first round 67. Couldn't make a putt for the second and third rounds, but he, she just got this one to go in on six. And now a moment ago at the seventh hole, the par three. Here's N.Y. Choi. Just missed the green at the par three, 168 yards today, but uh, cured all putting problems. Short game seems to be back. So she's at seven under par with that magnificent chip in. Let's look at the leaderboard here. Final round, the CN Canadian Women's Open. Lydia Ko, an amateur, trying to do what four others have done, but no one since 1969. She'd be a full 16 months younger than Lexi Thompson when Lexi became the youngest winner on the LPGA Tour a year ago. Shin. Choi, Norquist, Chella Choi, Inby Park, all within two shots. Stacy Lewis, as I mentioned, trying to win Player of the Year honors as two-time winner this year, six under par. Serena Peller's having a really wonderful tournament. Suzanne Pedersen just birdied to get to four under par. Sydney Michaels in 2010 won the Canadian Amateur here, so she's got some good karma. Maura Dunn's having a wonderful tournament as well. Mika Miyazato won last week in Portland. Munoz at three under par, playing the 11th hole. So this a unique setup here at Vancouver Golf Club. There are three par threes. They are the third, seventh, and twelfth holes. And there are three par fives, the sixth, ten, and thirteen. And as Judy and I were discussing, a lot of the uh, scoring, especially Lydia Ko, she's been dominant on that back nine, which is such a key to the deal here. Let's tell you who's following whom. Gail Graham, two-time winner on the LPGA Tour, actually lived about five minutes from the golf course at one point in her life. Lydia Ko, Stacey Lewis, and G.A. Shin will be with Gail. Don Ko Jones, three-time winner, 24 years on the LPGA circuit. Inby Park, Chella Choi, Sydney Michaels are with Don. Bruce Rainey has just flipped up. He's back and forth, actually, a bit today. But he's right now with Maura Dunanna Norquist and Mina Harry Guy. And he may also uh, be following a bit of the Taylor Kotu, Vicky Hurst, Nayan Choi threesome. Elliot Friedman set up at the 18th for our interviews and features here on the final day today. It's going to be a wonderful afternoon of golf, and we welcome uh, viewers on the Golf Channel as well to our CBC coverage. Nayan Choi at number eight. And is this for birdie? So we, it's just you and I, Judy. We'll figure out what that must be uh, what she's looking at here. As I mentioned, she uh, carded the 67 on Second day number one. And the U.S. Open champion has been struggling the last two days to find that short game. Her caddy now, Jason Hamilton. Very familiar with Jason, of course. Shane Joel was actually on the bag when she won the U.S. Open in Kohler, Wisconsin. So she's had to uh, make a few adjustments there. Paul Fisco going over to the PGA Tour. Rounds of 67, 72, 73 for Nayeon Choi. 
hasn't won since that U.S. Open victory, and she says she has to quit basking in the limelight and uh, get back to the business of golf every week. We had 76 golfers make the cut here at the Canadian Open. 26 countries were represented starting Thursday. We're down to 20 countries now still alive in the chase. You know, that U.S. Open began with 1,364 entries, 44 countries, 47 states. And Nayeon Choi became number one out of that 1,364 entries, the most ever. And the big story for this victory, she was mirroring what her hero and every South Korean's hero, Seri Pak, had done. She won on the very same golf course that Seri won in 98. You know, if memory serves me well, that putt that we just saw a minute ago was the birdie at 11 after the disastrous hole at the 10th in the final round. And uh, it is so hard to hold yourself together uh, when you've done something really awful and you think you might have lost it. But she did it masterfully, and uh, you really have to congratulate her. Well, I remember she tripled, as you say, 10, as she had driven her ball off into the uh, trees. And Shane Joel, her caddy, she was having a bit of a conversation about club selection for 11 with him. And then she took a bite of a power bar and went by herself over to the trees and collected herself. And Shane said the conversation they had going down the 11th fairway was about cars. He was trying to think, as all caddies do, anything but golf, right? So he said to Nayan, what was the first car he ever owned, thinking it would be some jalopy? And she said, well, it was actually a, an Audi, and she named some high-level Audi. So, different world. You know, I can remember when she won on the first time on the LPGA Tour, she bought a car. And when she won the second time on the LPGA Tour, she bought a house. So um, I don't know what she bought after the U.S. Open, but it must have been something pretty special. So a par for Nayeon Choi leaves her two shots in arrears of the story, the talk of town, Lydia Ko. Nine under par leads in the final round of the CN Canadian Women's Open. Already a lot of chatter on social media about the scenario that Ron and Judy described off the top of the show. What happens to the winner's check if the amateur Lydia Ko wins this tournament? To follow along and join in, www.facebook.com slash CBC Sports. Our Twitter feed is at CBC Sports. The hashtag for this tournament is CN Golf. Ron? And Elliot, as I mentioned, uh, it'll be whoever finishes second, assuming Lydia wins, that gets the $300,000. She can get a gift certificate to the pro shop, but it can only be up to $750. Chella Choi now, 22-year-old, celebrated her birthday yesterday and was eight under par, a co-leader after two rounds of competition here. Currently finds herself two back, seven under par. playing along with NB Park and Sydney Michaels. Let's just get you one more look at our leaderboard. Ko, born in South Korea, moved to New Zealand when she was five years old. Kind of like uh, Amy Yang, who went over to Australia. It's very common if you go for the opportunity to play more. Choi, eight under par. Shin, who was a teenage phenom, tried to get her LPGA uh, tour status when she was just 15. Nayeon Choi right there. Don Co Jones, you've been following uh, this group. How have they been? Well, Sydney actually started out with birdie on one. Unfortunately, had a double back on number five. This is a seven iron from 168. Looks like it's going to be a little left of the pin. She may get a kick right. Well, you don't get a green in regulation for that, but um, it's just like a green in regulation and a birdie opportunity. And you obviously saw the third ball sitting there. Three wonderful shots. Here's what Inby did, Don. This two is seven iron, and she took it right at the flag. Inby actually was uh, one of those who, as a young golfer, asked for an exemption to play on the tour and she was 17 years old song he kim had requested uh, a futures tour exemption and they actually lowered the futures tour age from 18 to 17 and that enabled nb to play on that tour so got her sort of started she's 24 years old now but a lot of these koreans dominant as teenagers so we mentioned there were 76 who made the cut for canada just one oakville's jessica shepley who you can see is four over on the tournament so three over for the day today but the oakvillian made a great 
10 foot putt at 18 on Friday to qualify out of the 15 Canadians entered here. Jessica's carrying Canada's colors and she's a disciple of Sandra Post. The legendary Sandra Post was her teacher. So nice story there. Playing with Jarena Pillar and Pillars at the uh, hot hand all day today. She's five under for her round. So you wouldn't imagine that somebody that started the day over par, she started the day at plus one, um, could really just in the middle of the back nine make herself a, a factor in the tournament. But Jarena Pillar has done that. She's got a lot of power in her game. And uh, she is a, a bit of a streaky player. We uh, saw her play a lot of golf at the LPGA Championship this summer when she tied for sixth, but actually had a chance to win with three or four holes left on Sunday. What a move that is, 32nd to begin the day, and now finds herself an eighth. That was Jessica Shepley's third out of that front right-hand bunker. This par five playing a lot shorter today. They have taken it one tee forward. It's playing at 461 yards, and everyone in the field is going to have a crack at this green in two. And if you make more than four, you're going to know you lost a shot to the field. Two-time winner of the Jocelyn Bourassa Award here in Canada. Jocelyn, of course, captured the, the Canadian, the first CN Canadian Women's Open, 1973. Just being told that uh, Jarena Pillar's putt, Judy, was for birdie, not par. So Thanks, man. Just tremendous round for Jarena Pillar. Six under. Now back to the ninth hole, and now young Troy, her second shot. Rough is spotty. Uh, there are places where it's really not a, very much of a factor, but there are places uh, where you can get in some very green, kind of juicy, lush stuff, and the rough can be a big factor. 24-year-old Choi is fifth on the money list this year with a million, of course, in large part because of that U.S. Open triumph. Now to seven, the par three, and those three great tee shots. First to putt is Chella Choi. And Don, what you got there? Uh, this one about 16 feet, and it will be fast coming from the back part portion of this green. It may want to wiggle just a little bit to her right, but it will be fast. He three putted the fifth hole, got herself above the hole. And they're certainly firming up, and they are quick today. The very fast putts downhill were not Chella's strength yesterday. Friday, she rolled off eight birdies over 10 holes, beginning at number six through 15. And that 64 put her right in the thick of it. She was eight under tied with Lydia Cole for the second round lead. So a beautiful birdie putt to grab a share of the lead there. Here's Anna Nordquist. This is a birdie attempt at the eighth. Ron, she is minus three through seven. Trying to go kind of Barry White low in the front nine here. Well, Bruce, if we go Barry White low, it's because there are golfers right behind our broadcast location. We're on the 10th. Someone's going to hit behind us, so we'll be keeping it down. Well, you know, like she's a, a birdie machine when she gets it going, as you know, Ron. Top 10 on the tour in birdies made. This is about 10 feet, I would say, above the hole. Maybe leaking a bit to her right start at her her tournament on Thursday with a 74 and has clawed back to this point. I think that's always admirable uh, when you might just say this isn't my week. But to get back in there, come back out Friday morning and uh, probably spend a lot of time on the practice tee Thursday evening and make something happen. Just touches this. Judy, much discussion today between player and caddy about how firm and fast the greens are, and in some cases, how tough they are to hold even today. Yeah, the bright, the bright sunshine um, and the firmness of the greens. Let's go over to the 24-year-old Californian, Sydney Michaels, for a car. Nice 
you know, just to finish the firmness of the greens, uh, that is part of the challenge when you play to the greens. Everyone trying to keep the ball underneath the hole. Now this is Inby Park's birdie attempt at seven. Two thousand eight U.S. Open champion in B Park, twenty four years old, as well as Diane Joyce. That's her third shot in at nine, and that looks like a good one. So she'll have that comebacker for her par, and that would be a, a significant putt here early on for N.Y. Choi, who's at seven under par. Two behind now are co-leaders, Lydia Ko and Chella Choi, at the CN Canadian Women's Open in Coquitlam. N.Y. Choi now with her par putt at nine to remain at seven under two back of our co-leaders. So that will drop her to six under par. It's interesting, Chella Choi is trying to win her first event too. So not only is Lydia Ko as an amateur trying to make history, but this for Choi is a, a huge opportunity. And here's her second shot now. Ron, this is from 136. It's hitting a little eight iron. It's important to keep them below the hole. From South Korea, now makes her home in Jacksonville, Florida. And now here's the 15 year old. Coming off a of birdie on the last. This just a little grip 22 degree hybrid. Very aggressive line. All right, we just want to, as you said, Gail, because of that birdie at six, that moves her into a sole possession of top spot at 10 under par. Lydia Ko with that birdie, it's not yet showing on the computer, but 10 under par, so she'll have a one shot lead at the moment over Chella Choi, who had a nice eight iron in, so it's got a birdie opportunity just ahead of her. Again, Choi playing with Lydia Ko and Moira Dunn. Moira Dunn. Check that. Ko's playing with Stacey Lewis and G.A. Shin, that's yesterday. Choi is playing with Inby Park and Sydney Michaels. And Ron, this is G.A. Shin. She's got her 23 degree hybrid coming off of an unfortunate double bogey on the last hole. And a beautiful line. Ron, you can see the firmness of the greens because uh, G.A. throws that ball very high in the air with those little clubs. And Gail, just because our computer's down, what, what happened with the others on that uh, last hole? Uh, Ron, well, GA had a, G, GA hit it in the trees off the tee, and, and as I said, unfortunately, made double bogey. Both Stacy and Lydia made beautiful, beautiful birdies coming down that hill. Excellent. GA felt she had a tough uh, 2011, Judy, that working on her distance, uh, trying to improve her uh, distance, kind of affected her game. I think it's very hard for a lot of uh, people who are average off the tee um, on this tour and on a lot of tours, uh, male or female, to uh, continue to always play within themselves. And you, you look at all these people who drive the ball a long way and then this handful who are actually bombers and you think to keep pace, I got to find 15 yards somewhere. And a lot of people lose it all trying to find that 15 yards and there are very few who actually find it unless they find it with some brilliant equipment change just the absolute right combination of club and shaft i remember when she went head-to-head -head with michelle we two years ago at winnipeg and michelle won ga thought that was part of the problem there too she got aggressive trying to keep with michelle okay sydney michaels now 400 par this is her birdie putt at eight and this will be super fast sydney turned pro after that Canadian amateur woman in 2010. Uh, she was the rookie of the year on the Features Tour in last year, and then a rookie on the LPGA Tour this year. When she won that amateur, first round 66 set her on her way. She had a great four rounds, 66, 71, 70, 72, to finish at nine under. Tremendous performance. The UCLA grad. Okay, we have off tape uh, a look at how Lydia Coe Got to 10 under par. This was at number six a few moments ago. 
lengthy birdie putt. Flawless. Coe won the Australian and New Zealand amateur stroke tournaments this year. She also won the New Zealand match, and she was 39th at the U.S. Open in Wisconsin. Here's Canada's Jessica Shepley now. And Jessica's not having the day she had yesterday. She had a tremendous third round here. Not the 70, but as she said, not only was she two under, felt she played one of the best games of her life. Okay, Chella Choi now with this birdie putt. Well, Ron, she's got off to the start that you'd like to on a Sunday, birding three of her first seven holes, and we know she can make birdies. This st straight up the hill should move a little bit from left to right. We'll be slow. Good call, Don. So she'll remain nine under par one in arrears. Back to the seventh, and G.A. shins up with her second shot. Ron, this is an ugly lie. Um, deep and rough. You can see how thick it is up to her ankles. And it's straight downhill as it hits green and moves towards the flag. Very ticklish. That's beautifully played, but she's going to have a tester coming back. Hasn't missed a cut since 2010. Jane Blaylock's amazing 299 successive tournaments without missing a cut. Okay, over to the 10th hole we go, and we'll pick up with Na Young Choi. Her second shot here on the par five. Well, she let go a little quick. It would indicate she didn't love it and she was trying to put the ball up on the right side of the fairway and get a good jump that she could have put the ball on the front of the green mm. 10 and 13 are the par fives on the back nine and this that's really the area where you want to strike before the five successive par fours now back to seven and earlier well, at least see the golf ball on this one but it's uh intimidating looking straight down the green down that slope and watching what uh, ga just did yeah just uh in the, just in that deep stuff uh, not quite against it but just in it and uh, just completely fluffed it. it it takes a lot of courage to uh, go through the shot when you feel so much grass before the ball and she did not go through it so she's got some work ahead of her on seven meantime inby park on the eighth hole has this for birdie should have got a good teach from Chella on this putt. Perfect. So that moves her to two back for the moment. But as you saw, Cole has a tricky par situation on seven here. Gail. This one very quick. Um, swinging from right to left. And there's Brian Alexander. Her home hero. Definitely a calming influence for her. Um, lots of experience in, in his game, but he um, he's, he's convinced her to play some shots that are far beyond her years, and she's executed them well so far. One little hiccup here. He is a BC Amateur Champion, a 63-year-old Vancouver Golf Club member, her caddy. Slow down. And this is where it takes a little patience. Um, you're not only frustrated about the shot you just played from behind the green, but you're doubly frustrated because you hit a quite nice shot to the green and uh, didn't catch a break. To nine we go. Anna Norquist has this for birdie. Ron trying to make the turn in 31. Okay, now Stacy Lewis. This could be a big swing here. It absolutely could, and it does have a big swing in it, Ron. Big swing from right to left with this putt. Stacy's played very well with the exception of a three putt bogey on number five. Hmm. Very respectful of that, I think. 
too respectful. Yeah, you get breaking putts where the speed you elect to hit the putt and the line you choose have to totally complement each other. It's not like you can take the break out and um, hit a firmer putt. Uh, it's not a choice you can make. You've often theorized you can't think speed. I don't think you can. I think I think the biggest um, advantage you have with speed are your eyes. I think what you see translates some kind of message to your hands, to your brain, um, however that connection works. And uh, that's why it's a game of touch and feel. It's a little bit science and a lot art. Oakville, Ontario's Jessica Shepley with a nice par putt there on 14. Rains at four over par. Now the bogey putt for Lydia Ko. Actually, Ron, this is G.A. Shin, sorry. Yeah. And uh, a solid 10 feet here for par up the hill. We'll slide a little from her left to right. Lydia Ko will watch this closely. Yeah. Absolutely. Not enough speed, Judy. I guess we can call the greens the great equalizer this week. Well, that is Vancouver Golf Club's distinction. They're, they have the uh, courses uh, established in 1910, and the front nine is basically uh, from the pasture or the meadow, and it's uh, a bit hilly, and then the back nine are in the woods, but in all, it's, it's if you can drive the ball, you should be able to score, but the greens make it make it difficult. Yeah, and, and you know, the idea to keep the ball underneath the hole is a great idea, but in fact, execution-wise, if the greens get very firm, that gets tougher and tougher. Under pressure, you sink to the level of your training. Lydia Cole, clutch bogey, drops her back into a, a tie for the lead. Chella Choi and Lydia Cole at nine under par. Now, Nayeon Choi, who just had a bogey and is in a bit of difficulty here on the 10th. That's her third shot at the par five. She's found some local Korean restaurants very nearby, and she's very happy. Well, they have a, an annual Korean Heritage Day here in Vancouver, a huge Korean population, and the actual celebrations are held in Coquitlam at Blue Mountain Park. Everyone feels very really at home here. It's coming up from South Korea. There's a look at Stacey Lewis's uh, incredible numbers this season, the two wins coming at the shop rate was the most recent in June. She waited almost, well, more than a year um, after her major championship win at the Kraft Nabisco out in the desert in California um, to kind of reaffirm her good play with the win in Mobile and then back-to-back uh, -back wins actually in stroke play events. There's Anna Norquist launching one, 10th. Critical error to not put the ball somewhere where you can play a 10 because you can get home or you can get right in front of the green. Now the second shot for uh, Chella Choi at number nine, Don. Yeah, it's from 148. It is in the rough. It's not a horrible lie at all. She is on the left side of the fairway, and so she's got a good angle to this whole location, striking it very nicely. And I love that orange ball. It should be a new rule. She's hit more greens each day that she has played, so uh, clearly um, her iron game is in excellent shape. And three birdies already this morning. Right of the hole. Not sure if it'll stop. Good shot. And stop short of the fringe, so she'll be able to put that easily. The 20 countries represented, 34 are Americans, 16 from South Korea, four Spaniards, three Aussies, and Sweden, Scotland, and the Netherlands, represented by two. Here's the South Korean Envy Park now with her second. 
This is from 134. It's an 8-iron. She is it down. She is so confident with the putter right now, Don, that she must just sort of relish the idea of getting the ball anywhere near the hole. Oh, her tempo, everything is, is really, really good. 24-year-old Inby Park now makes her home in Merida, California. Six straight top tens, tied for second last week in Portland. Chella Choi and Lydia Ko. Chella trying to get her first LPGA victory. Lydia trying to be the first amateur to win on tour since Joanne Carner did in 1969. Some of the other names, Jessica Corda, winner earlier this year in Australia, that big playoff. And there you see uh, Sydney Michaels is a three under, former figure skater. We'll continue our final round coverage from Coquitlam. This is the CN Canadian Women's Open. Welcome back to Vancouver Golf Club. It's the third time that this club has hosted the CN Canadian Women's Open in 1988. Sally Little, Judy was saying yesterday, who really began the international or global invasion. And Nancy Scranton, the winner in 1991. So Thursday, Yanni Seng, number one in the world. Sen had five birdies in the last six to card the 66 that got her a one-stroke lead over N.Y. Choi. And then it was the Lydia Ko show from there. Co-leader with Chella Choi, and nothing's changed. And Saturday, you can see Ko managed to maintain a one-shot lead despite a, a bogey on the final hole. So Bruce Rainey's with Anna Norquist. Ron, this is on tape, and... Uh... Nordquist did hit a provisional. Wasn't sure where her first landed. I think it ran through the bunker and wound up under this tree. She had a, a bit of a channel to get out, decided to play it. Just ran it through the fairway, Bruce. We see that now, her ball landing across the fairway in the rough. Okay, let's go over to eight and Lydia Coe's tee shot. And this is going right. Needs a good bounce. Yeah. I don't know what he's, he's going to get. He's busy selling stuff right now. Now uh, up ahead of nine, Chella Choi. Not only will this uh, not be fast, but there's quite a lot of break in it. She's going to really have to pay attention to the speed. And like Judy was talking about, direction and the speed and combination of both make it difficult. But she's got a good feel of these greens. And that's what that takes, isn't it, Don? Is feel. Absolutely, Judy. You can only compute so much with putter in your hand. A little bit left for the par there for Cella. What is they? What do they say? Fell in love with the line. Yes. <laughs> And, and most, most good putters would tell you, I think all good putters would tell you, if there's one thing you have to get right, what's, which one is more important than the other, the speed is the most important. Because if you have the speed right, chances are you're going to be somewhere right there around the hole. Um, but if you have the line right and the speed dreadfully wrong, you've got a putt to make, and she's got a putt to make right here. You were saying uh, one interesting characteristic, the kids used to come on tour, all of them, sensational putters and that's changed a bit here it has and i i i really don't know why uh, unless there's just so much emphasis on different ways to putt and so on as you grow up but um i, I know when i was a kid and for many years thereafter all kids were good putters and the joke used to be well they've never missed one so they don't know what that feels like but we have seen a lot of really really talented young players um who aren't as good a putters as some of the really good players that we have known. If you go back to players in the women's game, players like Kathy Whitworth, Betsy Rawls, people who just had that great innate sense. Nancy Lopez was a spectacular putter in the prime of her career. Good putt. Well, Lydia Cole, that's not her strength. She played extremely well at the U.S. Amateur and putted well and was told she was a queen of the short game. But she said, that's not me, really. Here's uh, N.Y. Choi now for... It says to go to seven under par. But Co is not, that's not the strength of her game. Certainly Michelle Weed was not the strength of her game. It was a little bit when uh, Paula Creamer, let's say, broke on. As a teenager, yes. that's true. But here's Co now with that second shot. 137 yards. She got real lucky, got a bounce off the gallery. It was going for the trees. And this is seven iron. Just or she can putt it if she chooses to. Considering the lie, Judy, I think that's a great shot. At 
the 15th hole, par four for par, Jessica Shepley. Boy, it's been the first or second hardest hole on the golf course all week. Uh, 15 uh, really requires a straight tee shot. It's a big green, hard to get the ball close to the hole and difficult to putt. Here's Anna Norquist's third shot, Bruce. Ron is from 210 out, flag at the back, chosen a hybrid. Trying to run this back to that flag. Yeah, well, not not a bad spot, but it'll work to do. Jessica Shepley's a journalism or took journalism at University of Tennessee. And like Laurie Kane and like Donco Jones was a fine basketball player. Credits coaches Mr. Clayberg and Mrs. Guest as really uh, fine-tuning her sporting spirit. So it's a lone Canadian, Shepley of Oakville, Ontario. You know, Ron, um, a, a good friend of mine in the game for many, many years once said the best thing you can do for a young player is have them involved in a solo sport like golf and also have them play a team sport. It makes for the most well-rounded athlete. third shot number eight. And Gale she Burton. was in a very, very bad lie over on the left side of the, in the rough. It's quite usually a good chipper of the golf ball. And in that effort to, to hit the ball a little bit longer, uh, lost a little of her accuracy, which uh, used to be phenomenal. Okay, a moment ago, Stacy Lewis, her second shot at the par 40. And Ron, this was from 128 yards, 9 iron. Shot. Don't have to tell you, Judy, that a lot of the Canadians who are NHL hockey players love the game of golf, and they are a number of members here at Vancouver Golf Club who are NHL players, Jerry Sillers, played for Don Cherry and with Don Cherry in Rochester, Darcy Rhoda, Cesar Maniego, Harold Snipes. Nice. Look out. Boy, that's a great shot by Lydia Coarley. Yeah, hockey players and baseball players are all um, fanatical golfers. Well, a little bit later, you're going to give us the anatomy of the Lydia Co swing. And I was looking at her club head. Here's just a look at uh, Co, 15 year old. Deserved a break after the uh, tee shot, as you said, at seven. Kind of frustration setting in that that one didn't hold the green. Then to kind of hack away, bad drive on this hole, and that almost pulled her right back. But I was saying about Coe's uh, club head, when we look at her driver, evidently is a long shaft, but you can see the, the bend, and you said it doesn't really matter so much on the, on the drivers. A hockey stick and a club getting the right one. Such a big part of it. So Lewis at birdie putt. Leave her with a tap in par. To 10. Fourth shot now at the par 5. Oops. Her on good line. Pretty easy shot there. I think just land this on with a triple down to the hole. Eleven we go in the second shot at the par four, 11th for NY Choi. Nine iron up the hill at uh, the uphill par four, the hole in the back portion of the green today, all the way back 27 paces, and that is a lovely mm. shot. Now let's go back to eight and GY Shin. This is a for part. G is not having a great day, two over par on her round, five under. Four back now, Chella Choi and Lydia Ko. So for her to be two over on the day is actually the exception to the rule. As you can see, 
tops on the LPGA Tour in 2012 in rounds under par is G.I. Shin. I'm Miyazato, Suzanne Patterson. Suzanne's having a funny year. A lot of her numbers are actually quite good, but the results haven't been great. She's won 500,000, but for her, not a ton. And for GA, this is skewed a little bit because she didn't play right in the heart of the summer. Um, I said yesterday, but she has just come back just a few weeks ago after hand surgery on the heel of her left hand. Um, it was a very, very tiny, as you know, lots of bones in your hands, a little tiny broken bone. And uh, so she's only been, been back um, about a month. Anna Norquist will try to make her par here at 10. Election that one get away. Three under on the day, two back. In today's world of competition, you simply have to play the par fives well. Vancouver Golf Club with just the three of them as well, so it's uh, it's all the more critical that you take advantage of six, which is the long hole on the golf course, designed by Jim Barnes. Long Jim Barnes won the inaugural. PGA won the U.S. Open in 1921 and won the British Open in 1925, designed the first nine holes here at the Vancouver Golf Club. So she will remain at seven under par, two back. Here's Lydia Cole on the ninth tee. And uh, after a few holes of missing the fairway right, that one's right down the center. All her scoring has been on the back nine here, so one more. This is the halfway hole, and when she's through there, it will be her prime territory. a big win in the uh, Women's British Open at Sunningdale. Uh, GA came to the LPGA Tour the next year. It sounds kind of awkward, but in that year then she became Rookie of the Year. And uh, second tour that year was Anna Nordquist, who we're watching alongside today also. 10, the second shot for NB Park. And that's from 280 yards. Moving left. Yeah, it didn't appear to go in the trees, but it's definitely uh, offline for Envy. Huge galleries on hand. This is the final round of the CN Canadian Women's Open. Our recent champions, Brittany Lincecum, Michelle Wee, Suzanne Pedersen. It's always a who's who. $2 million purse, $300,000 to the winner. Unless you're Lydia Ko, the amateur would not be able to claim that prize money. But as Envy Park just explained, while it's always a who's who, you could, Phyllis Diller used to have the line, I'm not in the who's who, but I am in the what's that. So Park has a bit of work to do when we come back to our fourth round coverage of the CN Canadian Women's Open. The CN Canadian Women's Open, CN employs 22,000. I wonder how many of those employees play the game of golf. They estimate in Canada there are 6 million golfers. Over 20% of our population enjoy the game, and a lot of them have a bright future thanks to CN. More on that story now from L.A. Tree. This year, the CN FutureLings program held six regional junior golf championships across Canada. These competitions give juniors aged 12 to 18 a chance to showcase their skills at the highest levels in the top competitive environment, tournament golf. This year's events were held in Manitoba, B.C., Ontario, Alberta, Quebec, and PEI. On the girls' side, Anna Kim in Toronto led the way in May with two championship titles. Her first win came in Parksville, where she shot a final round 66. Two weeks later, she won in Bath after a one-hole playoff. Then in late June, it was Ali Shin of Coquitlam, B.C., who took the title in Morden with three birdies in her final round. And rounding out the year, Catherine gravel Corsol was the winner in San Sophie, Jacqueline Lee won a playoff in Sundry, and Megan McDougall finished off the season with a win thanks to a final round, one under 71. And Ron Anna Kim is a pretty talented young player. In addition to the two titles she won this year, she won two in 2011, the Atlantic and Quebec championships to go for four in the last two seasons. 
Thanks, Elliot. Chella Choi, Lydia Ko are leaders at nine under par, and they're getting some uh, pressure here now from Nayeon Choi. This is a birdie attempt a moment ago at the 11th, the par 4 11th. The U.S. Open champion runs that in to go four under for her round today, eight under, one back. And pleased to be joined by the CEO, president of CN, our sponsor, our magnificent sponsor, CN. Claude Monjou. Mon Claude, uh, I want to thank you for, uh, again, a wonderful week. And I get first brush thoughts on uh, what you've enjoyed about, the, well, I guess, about 10 days you've been out. You know what? It's a full package. It's a, such a beautiful day in Vancouver. We don't get that many of those. You know, an exciting feel. So uh, we're very, very pleased to bring the Open to, to Vancouver and have such a wonderful success. Aside from these great events, I, I see from everything uh, that we see and uh, programs that we've seen on, on our television screen this week, but I see with all the young players in Canada, your commitment to bringing um, juniors and youngsters um, into the game and I think doing it so well that they are staying in the game, really important. You know what, we didn't think that Lydia at 15 years old would be such a <laughs> cool cat, you know, burning the course, but uh, yeah, future links is a, is a critical element. It's a full package. We have the you know, the, the charity, which is huge the, with the Miracle Match. We have an exciting field, and, uh, and we support the youth golf uh, to boot. So that, it's the full package. The Pro-Am's always a highlight, and you got to play with our defending champion. <laughs> I did. I don't know that play qualifies, but the, <laughs> I did my best to try to keep up. How nervous were you? You had Brittany Linscombe, of course. I remember playing with Suzanne Pedersen, was the defending champion from 2009, and I played with her at St. Charles in Winnipeg, and I could not get the ball in the fairway for about four holes. You know, that I had one natural birdie. That was my oh. highlight. After that, I cratered. That's what keeps you coming back. Well, exactly. Could you keep it with her off the tee? <laughs> no. She's too long for me. She's too long for most. <laughs> Just looking ahead, Claude, maybe a comment on uh, where we are next year with uh, the CN Canadian Women's Open and what uh, you as a, as a title sponsor are looking to do to, to grow your involvement. You know what? We, got, we uh, go back to Edmonton next year. I think they did a lot of our innovation to their course, and it's a beautiful venue, so we look forward to be there in uh, at Mayfair next year where Lorena Ochoa won the last time they uh, held the event so uh, a great champion so nous donnons grand plaisir d'être parmi vous should we merci Félicitations. beaucoup yeah, merci. congratulations Claude Mongeau the uh, president and CEO of CN and Claude will be back later to present the miracle match check which uh, as Elliot Friedman was teasing is, uh, is very special congratulations thank you thank you a short break and then we'll continue our chase for the two million dollar purse Chella Choi Lydia Ko the 15 year old from New Zealand deadlocked at nine under Mention our thanks to the title sponsor, CN. Here are some of the individuals who've also been a godsend for us in mounting our coverage from Vancouver Golf Club. Paul Batchelor, our host club chairman, Byron Cook. Dave Kennedy, the course superintendent, has done a ridiculous job of uh, trimming here and watering there and cutting in just the right way. He and his crew have been just can't say enough. And uh, also uh, thanks to Brent Goff's not on there, Randy Smith, the head professional here at the Vancouver Golf Club. A tremendous staging of the 2012 edition, the third time Vancouver Golf Club has been our host. Jessica Corda, the 19-year-old who won earlier this year in Australia, kind of honoring her dad's excellence in sport. Peter was a champion in the Australian Open in tennis, and here she is. She's having a great day today, four under. She just has birdied nine, 10, and 11. That for Eagle. So there's a nice move by Jessica Corda to go to six under for the tournament, three behind our co-leaders. Jessica, pretty steady through the first three rounds, 72, 71, 71. Now, while we were away, Lydia Ko, who has led this tournament for 29 holes. Fifteen years, four months, and three days. Now, to the tenth tee we go, and let's pick up with that. And Gail Green. And Ron G.A. is coming off a very nice birdie on the ninth, kind of right at the ship. Judy, I'm not sure that even if in the fairway she will have the length to get home here today. But that's a good one. There's a usually a good little run out at 10. Um, we saw a big difference yesterday in average driving distance. Uh, 
people were just getting the ball out there a lot farther and the golf course did not play fast on Thursday and it has uh, sped up a little bit each day since. Blue skies, there's uh, just a skiff of wind, so that's not an issue. Stacy. She's plodding along, uh, lurking, Judy. This way. And she's jumping at the bit a little bit, and I think a little impatient. That one, she's uh -oh. left out to the right, and I think caught the bunker. Yeah, and that is costly for Stacy because she yep. has got some length in her game, and I think she could put the ball on the putting surface. Players have to look way wow. up high at these giant trees to uh, try to get a sense of what the wind is doing because so many fairways are protected. And you see that little baseball swing type of practice when she just took after taking two very good practice swings, just trying to stay loose. She's been doing that all day. Didn't notice her doing that yesterday. I think it's a little bit of a release to relax her. And maybe trying to round the swing out a little bit and uh, not make it too steep. And Judy, she has been leaving the ball up to the right, if anything, but this one's very good down the center of the fairway. She'll have a chance to go at this one. Grade 11 student, they go to 13 in New Zealand, and she'll miss some more school when she goes to the British. And she will I'm sure none more so than the proud Missouri kid, Judy Rankin. There's our leaderboard. We're kind of whispering here. The leaders are actually core of the group. We're moving right behind our location. Judy, Chella Choi, Lydia Ko at nine under par. Katrina Matthew made a great move yesterday, but sort of stuck four under par. Jarena Pillars had the great round today, 600 for her, her round. Behind us, Lydia Cole with her second shot at the R510. This is from 247 yards. The pin is well back on the screen, 30 yards back. Yeah, and this is a three wood. Well, she's indicating that she lost it just to the right, or she wants it to move to the right, but uh, a little idea of the power that this 15 year old has. What a beautiful, beautiful golf shot. That for Eagle. At 13, also the par five, and my joy. We're on the tee way up today. This one popped a bit and heading towards the right bunker. Metallica, She's been here in town for three shows over four nights. That one's in her Sandman. Is that where you've been? No. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I don't know what happened. I should have been. And here's Jessica Shepley now. Second at the par four, 17th. Jessica will have the distinction of being top Canadian at the 2012 CN Canadian Women's Open, and that's a really nice uh, moment for her, Judy. We were discussing yesterday, Jessica, just at that stage in her career when she started to wonder if there are any good returns to come, and this has been one of them for her. Played a little bit better at the beginning of the season, but of late, uh, she's uh, just had trouble getting off of that train where you're, you're not playing on the weekends, and uh, it all is seeming pretty hard. I'm glad to see her have a good week. Stacy Lewis at number 10 with her second. Oh, check that, of course. Third shot for Stacy Lewis. Too close to the green for her second. Yeah, um, she's still actually quite a ways from the green. She, uh, Stacy, hit it in the right bunker off the tee and uh, kind of chilly chopped a, a hybrid to this position. She's got solid 150 to the hole, Judy. Chili chopped. We're all familiar with that shot, Gail. It wasn't pretty. It burned some worms. <laughs> she wasn't very happy with it either. And you could definitely see a little bit of the frustration start to press a little bit. Gave her golf bag a nice whack after that last one. Well, she's been known to uh, get rather heated after doing something that uh, is uncharacteristic. And she's also been known to have that um, fire her up and inspire her to uh, straighten it out. She's figured out the immediate comeback after something like that. So this one's going right at the flag and get back to the all the way. Oh, hi. Good shot. We'll have a look now at that shot you were describing, Gail. Pretty good lie. It looks like she could put a clean strike on it, but uh, it uh, wasn't as fat as it was just, uh, I'm sorry, kind of half topped. 
There, you see, she kind of hit the belly of the ball. She uh, really never got down um, to the sand at all, so not the recommended way. You, you need a perfect strike playing from a fairway bunker. You can't afford to hit it fat, and you can't afford to hit it that thin. Has done really well in Canada, tied for second last year, and was fifth at the Emmanuel Life in Waterloo here in Canada earlier this year, but just one shot out of a playoff. In B Park now has this for birdie. By the way, we saw her drive was into the trees last time or close to it. She ended up with a par on that last hole, so she got out of trouble okay. This would be to move her into a tie of the lead. Statistically, the best putter on the tour. Somebody once said stats are like bikinis. They show you a lot, but not everything. But that showed us. I'm not laughing. I don't want you to think I'm laughing. <laughs> no, that's right. That didn't go well for one guy on the master, so we'll leave it at that. Stacy Lewis, uh, most birdies on the year, 246. Tell a toy. If you weren't with us yesterday, I can reiterate that uh, Chella Choi has not won on the LPGA Tour, but she has had a summer of some very low rounds of golf. And uh, this is a player who is not afraid to go low if she gets something going. Judy, this putt is from about 10 or 12 feet and not a lot of movement in it at all. She needs to put a little heat on the on the youngster. Get to double digits. Not one of the speediest putts either. She can kind of make a nice stroke get on. Yeah, she definitely has the green light here. That's why they're round. So, Chella Choi trying to win her first event on the LPGA Tour has the Outright lead at 10 under par here on Championship Sunday. Joy playing with Inby Park and Sydney Michaels. Anna Nordquist's group is just up ahead, playing with Maura Dunn and Mina Harry Guy. And here is Nordquist now. So she will remain seven under par. Three back. And a three under for the day got off to a quick start, but has stalled. Green's double cut with, with such bright sunshine. Um, I don't think they'll speed up through the day. They might get firmer, but not necessarily speed up for putting. Now Jessica Shepley, the Canadian, trying to get in tight here with her third shot at the par 4 17th. Good stroke. Back to 10, and Stacy Lewis with a birdie attempt. And this should move a little to her right. It's got a lot of speed. That's not her hole. But Norquist just not taking advantage of this 10th hole. Stacy won the Kraft Nabisco last year. It was a huge win. She's got 10 top 10s this season. Does so much for awareness uh, with the scoliosis. She had that seven and a half year stretch where she wore a back brace 18 hours a day starting at age 11. Here's April 29th, Mobile Bay, Alabama. Great touch on the 16th hole at Mobile, a par five. Uh, plays a lot like the 13th hole plays here. That was good for a one-shot victory against Lexi Thompson. And she admitted uh, feeling the nerves with Lexi Thompson on her heels. This is in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the ShopRite Classic. And with that performance, has presently supplanted Christy Kerr as the top American in golf. And Christy's not going to let her away with that. She was in the gym yesterday, I saw her. Her husband, Eric Stevens, who's a fine hockey player, drafted by the New Jersey Devils. 
She's on the bed here and played really well yesterday, did Christy. So Lewis, 141 points, leading the Rolex Player of the Year standings. And trying to, as we say, be the first U.S. player to win that since Beth Daniel in 94. Now, this is the eagle putt for Lydia Ko. And she got a little bit of a read off of Stacy's little slide, very slightly to her right. This would be a huge putt to make. Uh, but I, I like the way she did it. She didn't put herself at any risk for not making four. Chella Choi and Lydia Ko. They were tied at eight under par after th two rounds and still deadlocked. Now the third shot at the par 5 13th for Nayeon Choi. Very short. Par 5 today, that trouble off the tee was a kind of shoot yourself in the foot moment. Now to 12 and Chella Choi with her tee shot. That's a five iron rod turning over. It catches the slope. This could be good. Ah, at least a half a club off, Don. Hmm. Well, as you saw, playing 190 today. To 10 and G.I. Shin. Well, about 20 feet, straight downhill. as well. Had that appendectomy six weeks before she won at Evian, the Masters. Back to the 12th tee, the bar three, and Indy Parks up. That was a six iron. We've got seven players within three. Uh, don't go to the refrigerator. It's funny, we were discussing playoff permutations and what they would do. Australia had a six-way playoff. It's definitely tight. Here's Jessica Shepley now to try and clean up. That would be a nice part. 17 for Jessica. Three over for the tournament. Beautifully done. Now Stacy Lewis has to have this. Didn't look too thrilled about it, but no. uh, that was a key putt. Now, now she's letting us know what she thought about that putt. Yeah. Mike Weir always said when he won the Masters in 2003, it was the comebacker for par at 18 that was the one he remembered. Co-leaders here in the fourth round in Coquitlam. Welcome back to the Vancouver Golf Club. Our round four coverage continues here at the CN Canadian Women's Open. And earlier on, Ron thanked the members here and the individuals working the course this weekend for their great work. We should also thank them for allowing us to come earlier this year, Bruce Rainey did, and film these Think Golf features. Jack Nicholas had a way of lining up his shot. He stood behind the ball, looked forward to where he wanted to hit it, stepped up to it, looked down, and picked a spot just ahead of the ball on that line. Doesn't work for everybody, but if you're happy having problems with your alignment, maybe you can try this. With some of the juniors staying loose on the driving range at the Vancouver Golf Club, this is CN Think Golf, and today we take a look at a couple of the often undiagnosed reasons why your golf ball doesn't go exactly where you want it to. And for the discussion today, Taylor Kim, she's a member of the Canadian National Junior Development Program. Motomi LeBlanc, the LPGA Touring Pro from Sherbrooke, Quebec. Doug Roxburgh, the four-time Canadian amateur golf champion. And Doug, when you analyze a shot and you realize that did not go where I wanted it to, there are often a couple of simple reasons why. Uh, yeah, what we've got today is a, just a very, very simple technique to uh, to help out with alignment and ball position. And I'm going to 
we're going to have uh, Mode to demonstrate how uh, she works on the practice range. And all you really need are, are, are these two sticks to help you. Quite Absolutely, a bit, right? these are a couple of alignment sticks. They're available in any you know, pro shop. They're lightweight, can be carried in your golf bag uh, when you play. Uh, 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 two real good tools uh, to, to use. So, Mo, why don't you show us how? Now, one of the first things that she would have done was pick a target, and and the one stick uh, is aligned directly with the target. The other is aligned with where the ball position should be. So it's a very simple tool. So she can have someone behind her, like we're standing behind her, to help with the other parts of the alignment. The the forearms, the shoulders, the hips, they're all perfectly square and to you know right angles. So she's ready to go. Very nice. Beautiful shot. All right, good advice today on CN Think Golf. Taylor Kim, Doug Roxburgh, Moda Mean LeBlanc. For more, go to our website, cbcsports.ca. CN Think Golf. CN, proud supporter of junior golfers across Canada. Doug Roxburgh, one of the great amateur golfers here in Canada. Marlene Stewart Street would probably be the top female amateur golfer. And, uh, you know, just thinking of the achievements that she had in her career. Sandra Post is enjoying the action here at Vancouver Golf Club. So it's a real celebration of the game. And Lydia Ko, the 15 year old, of course, the talk of town, and wanted to look at her alignment, Judy. Yeah, we banked this picture to uh, try to show you. They were talking about your feet, um, your knees, your shoulders, everything um, in the same alignment. And uh, she she does that so well, but that line just showed you how beautiful her posture is. She has that nice straight back without working at it too hard. She has flex in her knees, uh, not a bend of her knees, but flex in her knees. And this nice comfortable position allows her arms to hang um, real freely and comfortably to swing the club back. And uh, you, li you like the fact that the driver's kind of on the heel, the toe up in the air. Well, it's a, it's a long golf club. It's either 44 or 45 inches. Uh, and so it would appear to be just a little bit big for her, but it is not. Uh, she swings the club to just a beautiful position um, at the top of the backswing, absolutely parallel to the line to the target. Watch how long she stays in a shot through the shot. And here's the key. When you stay in the shot through the shot and yet you keep moving, keep swinging, you're not losing any speed and you are staying in your posture. You might have also noticed in that slow motion that that club at the point of impact wasn't on the heel with the Absolutely toe up in not. the air. It was perfect. perfect. Yeah. As you said, it's always more critical with an iron in any event. But you're the lie of the golf club, that's correct. That was a beautiful 9-9 from 132 yards. There's Brian Alexander, her caddy, and he has been working with her on alignment too uh, throughout the uh, four rounds here. A swell job of that as well as reading those greens, tricky greens. Lydia's teacher, since she's six years old, is Guy Wilson in New Zealand, and um, he he really felt as though it was time for her to start playing a lot of golf overseas because they were the people to measure yourself against. At age eight years old, she said in an interview that she played golf every day, played or practiced every day. And Marlene Stewart Street, that was her big thing, was practice more than play. She, she actually liked to hit balls. What were you in your development years? Were you one that had to play the game, or were you happy to be on the range? Um, I, I, think every, I think everybody who plays the game, you have to have a, take a certain joy in standing and hitting golf balls. You just have to. And I think for uh, people growing who haven't reached all their strength yet, or certainly for women who are trying to get stronger, one of the ways to do that is stand there and hit a lot of golf balls, hit a lot of drivers, get your hands stronger. Um, some of that is every bit as good for you as work in the gym. Chella Choi now a co-leader for birdie at 12. Our three a long putt there, obviously. And a bit of work left. Now let's move ahead. Bruce Rainey's with Anna Norquist. Oh, sorry, I'm, Bruce has gone over to NY Choi. I take that back. So Anna's going to roll it on nicely. Boy, and it is what you would call a great lead. That is a beautiful place from which to putt. To 18, Jessica Shepley with her approach on the par four.
longest par four on the scorecard um, on the golf course, 424 yards, and it has played as one of the harder holes on the golf course all week. Back to 12 now. Jella Choi trying to clean this up to stay in the lead at minus 10. Whoa. Holding together really well. Over to 11, and Jay Shin has this for a birdie. And her nine iron found the very back of the green. She's got good 32, 33 feet. Judy, I think the back of this green is. Uh, has quite a bit of an illusion to it. Um, watched yesterday, players thinking the putts were gonna go from right to left and they went from left to right. She read that one pretty well. Yeah, good read there. It just kind of straightened up at the hole. Shin will have that to stay three back at seven under par, even on the day to day. Nayan Choi at four under for the day is pretty much the hottest hand of the front runners. Chella Choi on the tee at 13. I really love the change of direction in her swing. I love from the top how she um, lets her weight go to her left side and the club just kind of drops in just ever so slightly, drops into the slot and she swings to a high finish. Stacy Lewis now. After all the good play in the early summer, she was bitterly disappointed with not very good play at the U.S. Open, and she worked really hard. It was, temperatures were over 100. It was very, very hot at Black Wharf Run, and she had, she had put all the time in, of course, as a hundred other players did, too. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was really disappointed that she played so poorly there. Well, I remember N.Y. Choi had the uh, six-shot lead and then botched the 10th hole, and suddenly, Amy Yang was two back, and then she got the birdie at 11, but she really had to scramble to come off the rough on 12 and hit a sprinkler hit on 13 and just got lucky with that tee shot at 13, so she, she got it that one out. Lydia Coe's doing the same thing. Definite advantage having some eyes from Brian Alexander. advantage um, having what seemed to be no nerves and this is a historic uh, performance Lydia Coe can be the first amateur to win since 69 and uh, she seems oblivious as as they say ignorance is bliss and Joanne Carner the great Gundy as we knew her was was is became probably still is one of the great players in the game ever all right, Bruce, you went to all the trouble to get there. Do you want to tell us about that? Yeah, 170 run. She laid well back off the tee to avoid these fairway bunkers. And disappointed about making birdie on the par 5 13th with a good shot here on 14. Great drive as well. 14 is the easier driving hole than the one up ahead, 15. Five straight par fours now, and accuracy is going to really be a key on those holes. To 13 and an eagle attempt for an enormist. Norquist is seven under, four behind Cole. Has to be just a touch of left to right in this putt. Maybe, maybe it is not outside the hole. And as you can see, it's ever so slightly back up the slope. So about a, as makeable a putt as you will get on this green. make this to go to minus nine. And that little left to right did not happen. Sure is an easy four though. And let's see how the Swede has done this season. 17 events, so she's playing them all. And six top 10 results is excellent. But hasn't been able to uh, finish on top and match her rookie year which was a spectacular year and an LPGA championship win 
to 18. And Jessica Shepley with her birdie putt. for Jessica Shepley. Two-time winner of the Jocelyn Borisad Trophy. Honors the 1973 winner with a great run here. And we mentioned Sandra Post has had a ton to do with teaching Jessica her game. And Sandra will be presenting her with low Canadian trophy uh, later on in our coverage. So that's a really nice moment for, for Sandra and for Jessica. Take a short break and continue with the chase. Lydia Ko, the amateur, leads the way here. As Jessica Shepley made her big birdie putt on 18, nobody smiled more than Sandra Post, her mentor and friend who was watching next to the green. You can follow them and the leaders as they come through the back nine on our social media sites, www.facebook.com slash CBC Sports or our hashtag CNGolf on our Twitter feed at CBC Sports. Ron? And just to identify who's with whom, it's Ron McLean and Judy Rankin here in the broadcast booth at Vancouver Golf Club on course with Gail Graham, Don Cole Jones, and Bruce Rainey, and that's Elliot Friedman, of course. You just saw Elliot will have Sandra Post and Jessica Shepley for a special presentation here shortly. Nayan Choi is currently three shots back of Lydia Ko. Ko, the leader at 11 under par, one ahead of Chella Choi. And this is for birdie at the 14th, Bruce. Ron, the hole, 20 feet away. First six, seven feet of this back up the hill. Levels out now. And a missed opportunity. Mm -hmm. She's four under on the day. She opened with a 67 and then cooled to 72, 73. Let's move over to uh, the par 3 12th, and Lydia Coe is away, Gail. And this will stretched out today to 190. Lydia's got a 22 degree hybrid. Deadly. So she hit that club on seven and ran it over. And this time she just had it dialed in beautifully. Well, Ron, it was kind of a knockdown grip. She kept it below the level of the trees. That's uh, not a shot you normally see from a 15-year-old. Started the day saying Lydia Ko had her hands full. I'm midway through the day now, and I'm going to tell you the rest of the field has their hands full. Quite a story. She was four under on the back nine day one, four under on the back nine day two, shooting back to back 68s. Has done all her damage on this and back nine, so keep an eye on Lydia Ko. Here's a look at the uh, 12th hole. You know, the par three, uh, the back tee today, just in the third round did they play that forward tee. 190 yards today from the tee markers to the hole location. That hole lo location 26 paces deep in the green. Um, on the left side and uh, it's a pretty good look at the green. You can see some of the undulation. Um, it starts with uh, a, a pretty serious false front um, that really will take the ball back off the green if you spin it at all, but not that big a factor when the whole location is not on the front of the green. Uh, the green would tend to feed the ball towards that hole and you just saw that a little bit with Lydia Coe's ball as it ran out. Here's Jason with a birdie attempt now on 12. A lengthy one, 35 feet, and really not a whole lot of movement in this putt. Par putt for GA, playing alongside Cole and Stacy Lewis. To 13 we go, and Chella Choi, Don Cole Jones. 
She took a little bit of a risk hitting out of the rough on her second shot and has left herself a very difficult third from 58 yards. She's got to carry the bunker. Possibly use the backstop. That's a great shot, actually. Yeah, that little bit of spin saved her because it could have run to the back. So she'll have that for Birdie to try and get back into a share of the lead. Again, a reminder that Lydia Cole, if she wins the $300,000 first place, place money, can't take it. So that means that Chella Choi in second position alone right now at 10 under would be in line for that big paycheck. Now the birdie attempt for Stacy Lewis on the 12th. From 25 feet. I think if uh, you were to poll all the experts, Stacy Lewis would be the one you'd have thought uh, could be real intimidating and trouble today. And it's just not quite happening for Stacy yet. She's even par on the round, seven under four in her ears. And while uh, Lit, let's go to Inby Park. So what's uh, the situation uh, here, Don? Well, she pulled her five wood inch at a, only 199 to the hole. Not a bad shot considering it was where all the crowd was and the grass was uh, all trampled down. The two par fives, 10 and 13, the two easiest holes on the golf course. Um, so you can see what you're giving up if you don't play 13 well. Ko Choi out in front, uh, Inby Park in third position alone. It's just a very impressive leaderboard. That challenge from the majors for Choi trying to win her first tournament and Ko trying to win as an amateur. Three major winners, Stacey Lewis, G.A. Shin and Inby Park right there. This just from nine feet. Oh, she has it going on. You, you are so right, Judy. I can just feel this is trouble for the rest of the field. So Lydia Cole, the 15-year-old from New Zealand, is making a quite a name for herself at the Coquitlam Vancouver Golf Club and our coverage of the fourth and final round of the CN Canadians Women's Open continues. Final round coverage of the CN Canadian Women's Open. Lydia Ko is our leader at the amateur. The 15 year old is currently at 12 under par. Two shots clear of Chella Choi in B Park third nine under for Burke. And with that moves to 10 under par. A share of second place. Now, Chella Choi had this opportunity to move to 11 under at 13. This is off tape. So, she will remain two shots back of our leader, Lydia Ko. Top Canadian, the lone Canadian today, is with the first Canadian to ever play on the LPGA Tour. Here's Elliot Friedman. Yes, last year when Jessica Shepley won the Sandra Post Low Canadian Award, Sandra was not able to be there to present it. This year, to have your friend and mentor here to help present it to you, it must be a special feeling. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Sandra was my first instructor and has been my mentor and friend since I uh, started playing golf, so this means a lot to me. I can tell you that when you hit that big birdie putt on 18, as wide as your smile was, hers dwarfed <laughs> it. That was a, a special moment for you, Sandra, to be there. It was a, a fabulous putt, and I think, Jessica, you were only 14 years old when your dad brought you to me for lessons. Um, to think we're both standing here together and I'm presenting you with this medal. Congratulations. Thank you. Maybe a, a, a lesson that Sandra taught you, maybe some of the things that she taught you back then? Oh gosh, on the spot. Um, well, I was hitting pot fly drivers when I when I uh, first went mm -hmm. to see her, so just about everything. But you know, just uh, to work hard on my short game and to, to really grind. You know, Sandra was a fighter in, in her day and uh, taught me how to be a fighter as well. And Sandra, just as you present the, the award to uh, Jessica, your favorite memory of her when you taught her? Oh, we took a lot of trips. I think we went to the Bahamas and you actually beat me and I had to buy you a purple purse. Yes, I still have it. Good. <laughs> There you go. All right, let's do the presentation. Sandra, present to Jessica, please. Thank Again, you. for the second time. I'm Thank glad you. I'm here, sweetie. Thank you. All right, that's great stuff. Congratulations, Jessica. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sandra. Thank you. Ron? Well, now that's neat. Uh, Sandra Post uh, was actually 14 years old when she got to play around with Kathy Whitworth. She turned pro, as we all know, in 1960. 
eight at the age of 19. This is Yanni Sen, the world leader for par 18. But she was uh, 19 years old when she turned pro. She actually played, had the pleasure of meeting Kathy Whitworth, who was, you all know, is the greatest winner of all time in the LPGA Tour with 88 pro victories. That summer in June at the LPGA Championship, Sandra got into an 18-hole playoff with Kathy. And much like we'd have said, Stacey Lewis is going to blow the doors off Lydia Ko. Of course, it went the other way. Sandra shot 568 and beat Whitworth by seven shots. Here she is, the 15-year-old, and flappable one at 13. And Ron, this tee has moved up about 30 yards, so it's very, very accessible for every player. That one's a good one, right down the center of the fairway. Yeah, and it's long too. Uh, she uh, she has talked about working with a sports psychologist, and um, it was it was interesting the. Uh, the things she does to kind of get away and take a deep breath now and then and just the fact that a 14 15 year old can can process um, that kind of stuff in the heat of competition um, a very mature at least golf wise uh, young player Hung, her father and tina her mom here at vancouver golf club so she's got uh, family support of course anna norquist now at 14 for her birdie She's missed a few good chances here on the back nine after a, a good start today. She's in the thick of it, four back of Co, eight under par. Just want to let you know, Chella Choi safely made par at 13, so she's fine. Ten under, tied with MB Park, two back of Co. This to move to nine under par, three back. Well done. Needed that. Big hitter, Anna Norquist, comes through with a, a very important birdie there. So she's three away from our leader. And now let's watch Brian Alexander kind of look at the alignment for Lydia Cole here. So you were showing on Think Hockey. Bruce Rainey's not with that group, but that's a good illustration of it. Well, Ron, um, when you know when things are going right for you, when a yard in front of your golf ball is a slope that goes downhill for about 15 yards. It's like she couldn't have placed it any better here. It's like she's up on a tee. Mm. 213 to the flag. This is five wood. And that's a beauty. That is bad luck. Um, if that ball hits two feet, uh, to the left of where it landed, it would have taken that one jump right, right up on the green, and it was perfectly on line. Moved to Auckland at the age of five, lives in a suburb of uh, the city of Sales. Won the pro event in Australia as a 14-year-old. Again, we remind you, Brooke Henderson won a pro event on the Canadian Women's Tour and eclipsed her being the youngest ever to win as a pro. But she had uh, been a runner-up in the same event as a 13-year-old, and she's won everything in sight. The U.S. Amateur, she won the New Zealand match and stroke play amateurs this year. She won in Australia the amateurs. Here's N.Y. Choi. Braun 170 back up the hill into the wind, and herein lies the mystery of the Vancouver Golf Club. You'd love to make a, a charge, but these last five holes, the par fours, are tough, and it's going to be hard for Choi to do it. Over to 14th tee, and Chella Choi, Don. Important to keep this ball in the fairway to give yourself an opportunity to go at this pin. Pretty open uh, drive versus the one ahead for the next two. And that gets narrow down here through the throat. Yeah, narrow between the two bunkers, but that's perfect. Choi, three under for her final round today. Lydia Ko, four under on her round today. Carded 68s to open Thursday and Friday. She's got a two-shot cushion. Joanne Carner, the last amateur to win on tour in 1969. So pretty special stuff we're seeing here today. Current number one on Money One this season and Rolex leader, Stacy Lewis at 13. And she got it all the way down to the flat. This from 192, four iron. And Stacy did get it to the flat. Gia was down, halfway down the hill. Unfortunately, had a downhill lie. Judy, she's got a great line on this. Left to the pin. Yeah, wonderful shot. 
perfect spot to try to make a putt, Gail. That. She has not been doing that as of late. So, yeah, Lewis, seven under par. She would move to nine if she can knock that eagle putt down. More of our coverage of the Lydia Coe story after this. Ten under par, two back of Lydia Coe, our leader. Here's Chella Choi, second at the par four. Ron, that's from 130. Hello. You cannot miss it long here. That's a mistake. And it, it's it's the same result as if you short side yourself. She has no green to work with. Let's catch up on G.A. Shin's predicament. Gail Graham's with that threesome. And she did hit it left off the downhill lie. This is a very chewy, chewy lie here. A lot of grass around the ball. Nice. Beautifully executed. Suzanne Pedersen was asked what she thought of Lydia Ko, the amateur, and she said, well, she doesn't know where she's at just yet. <laughs> and Suzanne's right, Judy. By the time most of us make it, we've had it. Here's Inby Park, 10 under par. Gap wedge from 114. Really a little afraid after Cello Choi knocked it over. She kept it short of that rise. It's always a difficulty with farm greens. You fly it back to the hole, it takes that jump over the green. You uh, try to protect just a little bit, and you're left with a 30 footer, 40 footer. On a par 5, 13th. She'll have that for birdie. You know, you can say she's not quite aware of where she is and what she's doing, but the fact is, I think she is, and I think sports psychology has taught her to kind of live in her own world. Now Young Choi for birdie at 15. Around 25 feet, good breaker from right to left, and not enough. Now Young and Chela Choi, no relation. They train together in Thailand over the winter seasons. 15 has been one of the hardest holes on the golf course, even though it's a straightaway par four, not playing quite as difficultly today uh, because of a little easier hole location. Now this will be for Eagle for Stacy Lewis at 13. Hole high, this will move very slightly from her left to right. It's just about 12 feet. And she could use the shot in the arm. She had the Eagle yesterday and four birdies. Round the with a 66. Six Eagles at 13 today. Yeah. Lydia Cole, when she gets uh, running them in, uh, she had birdies at 12, 13, and 14 on the back nine. Both days she had four birdies, so obviously GA is first away here. A good opportunity for Cole to go to 13 under par. Looking for three clear of the field. British Open actually led the U.S. Open as an 18-year-old in 2007, so she was a hot shot kid too. Smooth. To eight under par, four back for the moment. Okay, Donko Jones. Let's uh, see what Chella Choi's situation is. Well, she's got a horrible lie, Ron. It's where the crowd or the players have been walking off the back of the green. As Judy said, she's got no green to work with. Her father's been looking at the lie a few dozen times here, and we'll just see how much feel she has. She's got to make sure she commits to the shot. Looks like a little bird's nest. Yeah, it's not pretty.
makeable. Now the birdie putt for Lydia Cora leader. Well, and this is for four in a row. And it is a mountain of pressure, you would think, on a 15-year-old. And she is now five under par for the day. Here's a look at some of her best work. And again, just some context. She's 16 months younger than Lexi Thompson was when she won Navistar last year. Paula Creamer won the Cybase when she was 18. Morgan Pressel won uh, Kraft Nabisco at 18. Creamer won the Evian at 18. We're talking three years from now. There's the birdie at the par 3 12th. Uh, Michelle Wee had a chance to win a major championship when she was 14 years old. She three-putted on the 11th hole and um, ended up with a very, very good tournament, but uh, she kind of lost her chance to win on the last few holes. Lydia calls Michelle Wee and Lexi Thompson mm -hmm. um, players uh, that, that she really watches and aspires to be like. Um, everybody might be aspiring to be like the kid, Lydia Ko, after today. What a performance. And had she declared uh, her professional status before this, uh, you know, chances are the uh, CN Canadian Women's Open, they might not have invited her, but she got the uh, invite as an amateur. She can't qualify for the 300,000, but she's got school on her brain. She would love to follow in Michelle Wee's footsteps and attend Stanford. So that would have been a nice uh, tuition boost. Looks to me like she's capable of handling a lot at one time. It's just very special. to weave it between two bunkers. It gets very narrow right there. And then you just leave that narrow way behind you. My goodness, what a big tee shot. Here's a look at the uh, 14th hole at Vancouver Golf Club, known as Blue Mountain. Wow. Uh, three, I'm, I'm still in awe of the tee shot. 375 yards, bunkers right and left. Um, both absolutely in play. The narrowest part of the fairway right there is only 15 yards across. And uh, Lydia kind of almost didn't see that in the, except in the air. Um, she is well past that right-hand bunker. We'll have a short shot to that back right, back left, excuse me, hole location today. And this is a hole where the last two days she has just battered the flagstick. She has stiffed it two days in a row, so I'll be anxious to see this wedge shot. This is the par putt for Chella Choi now, after uh, having that difficult chip up from behind the green. Needs this to stay at 10 under, tied with NB Park. Remind you again, the second place is for 300,000. Status quo prevails. Should I let them know that? Anyway, this is from about 12 feet. Should move a little bit from her left to right. Our cameraman has given us a beautiful view from behind the hole, Dawn, and that's exactly what we see. So that means Indy Park will be second to ten under, and she'll slide back into third with Anna Norquist at minus nine. Brittany Lincecombe, our defending champion, was out early today, and here she is coming up 18. Very popular, of course, with crowds everywhere. Loves to fish, so she's in a part of the world where she feels right at home. Finished second to Mika Miyazato last week. She made a great birdie on the uh, final hole and was pretty happy coming here as the defender, but it's not been a stellar week for Brittany. As you say, tied for 61st at this edition of the CN Canadian Women's Open is not a great showing for Brittany. Michelle Wee, conversely, uh, almost came back and uh, won again last year in Hillside. Suzanne Pedersen had a great run at it uh, when Michelle went wire to wire at St. Charles. Catherine Hull's victory at Ottawa missed the cut the following year, and Lorraine Ochoa, the last time we were in Edmonton, where we'll be next year. She came back with a tied for fourth, a nice effort. One more look at Bam Bam, and we'll come back with the conclusion of the CN Canadian Women's Open.
Welcome back to the Vancouver Golf Club in Coquitlam, British Columbia, 30 minutes east of downtown Vancouver. Third time it's hosted the CN Canadian Women's Open and a big story developing. 15-year-old Lydia Ko of New Zealand has the lead. This is a look at the start of the final round. She was the leader by one at eight and she bogeyed the 18th at the end of the third round. Everybody thought, aha, cracks. Maintained that one-shot lead at 11 a.m. Pacific time. One hour later, she was in a dogfight with Chella Choi, trying to win her first ever victory on the LPGA Tour, and three winners of majors on her heels, and then a whack. She came to the turn at uh, really the halfway hole. She just took over this tournament, and the back nine's been her friend all week and is again. Here's Brittany Lincecum at 18. And one of the neat things uh, on the 18th green today, the Canadian Armed Forces will tend the flag all day, honoring Patriot Golf Day, which is actually next weekend in Canada. It's a collaboration between the PGA and Golf Canada where they raise funds for the True Patriot Love Foundation it's for military programs, charities, and causes. And any golfer playing next week at a Patriot Golf Day course, you can make a donation. It's big in the United States. It raised $128 million and a wonderful idea. So Brittany Lincecum, uh, just trying to knock this in at that 18th hole. <laughs> That's a... Uh, Brittany. She has um, very expressive body language. Yeah, she's funny. <laughs> you know, the Vancouver Golf Club in World War I, 80 members enlisted, eight paid the ultimate sacrifice, including two of their directors, one of whom was Harry McInnes Hepburn, and he was the man who drilled the wells, which have served the course so well. The club's captain at the time, Angus McAllister, lost an arm from injury suffered in France. World War II, 25 members of this golf course, Vancouver Golf Club, enlisted. A rich history of support for the Canadian Armed Forces right here. And thanks, Brittany, for a great week. She was uh, like Lori Kane, sort of one of the key ambassadors for hospitality and did a wonderful job as always. While we were away, Anna Norquist up at 15 with this for par. For birdie on the previous hole, little trouble there. So Anna slides back with that miss. And right now at the CN Canadian Women's Open, the little engine that could is starting to run away. Here's her second. After a 270 yard drive, 26 <laughs> and a spinning pitching wedge. Marquist will have this for bogey. You know, Judy, just watching you watch Co. I remember doing a figure skating show. Uh, Sydney Michaels is a former figure skater. We had a show in Canada called Battle of the Blades where we took a hockey player and a woman figure skater, by and large. We actually did pair a female hockey player with David Peltier. Anyway, the show was a bit of a lark, and yet we had uh, figure skaters, legendary figure skaters like Christopher Dean and Taller Cranston come and watch what the skaters were doing, and they were just on the edge of their seat. I feel it in you watching Lydia. Well, it's just, it's, it's a spectacular performance and that uh, uh, there, there just is no struggle in it. This is, this is a young, uh, uh, we call her the kid, but um, I am allowed at this age to call her a girl because she is still a girl. She's 15 years old and she has a maturity on the golf course, um, you know, that would say she's been around for a long time. Uh, she has, in fact, played in a lot of places around the world. She's had a lot of good experiences. I, um, you know, her coach, um, Guy Wilson, went with her to the U.S. Open this year. And um, I read a note where he said he could have caddied for her, but he didn't think that would be good for her. He wanted her to have a tour caddy, to have someone else, so that she would um, start learning to make her own decisions. And it just seems like um, she's she's really getting the best of what some adults have to offer to bring a young person forward. Jay Shin playing alongside Cole and Stacy Lewis with her third. Very straightforward chip. Pretty decent lie. This is just her little 54 degree wedge. It's a little heavy, Judy. A little short and quick stroke and uh, we, we learn over the years certainly sitting in the seat I have now never works. Don Co. Jones, let's join you on the 15th hole where Chella Choice looking at her second shot at the par four. 
Well, again, she's hit the fairway. She's got 168 yards. And she's got her little five utility club out. You're talking about dollars and cents. <laughs> this is a very good pin to go at. It's pretty accessible. Just bring it in from right to left. She's played, she's played well. She just made that unforced error on the last hole by knocking it over the green. Well, she's just 22 years old and um, she will win. She'll be a first time winner on the LPGA Tour pretty soon. Uh, the golf swing's too good and she's gotten a taste of uh, playing in the heat and she's capable of shooting low numbers. I have to agree with you, Judy. Taking it right at the hole, a little left now. Wonderful. Don Coe Jones, seven top 10 finishes at the Canadian Open. Course records at Pritis Greens. Played well the last time the tournament was held here. I asked her about it in 1991 when she was sixth to Nancy Scranton. She could only remember the good things Nancy did. <laughs> but Don is a former winner of the Seoul Ladies Open. That was one of the first breakthrough victories for Don in her illustrious career. Shin will have this for her par. 14, yeah. And the back part of the screen slopes to the back. Uh, there's a little bit of a mound to the left of GA that uh, if the ball goes anywhere, it'll wiggle just a hair to her right. If you haven't guessed it, looking at your television screen, GA Shin is five foot one. As a philosophy, you'll always encounter three difficulties and three opportunities in a round of golf. Here's uh, what Stacy Lewis had for birdie just before that shin putt, and uh, this would take Lewis to eight under. Sorry, it would have taken her to nine under. She is at eight under. So. Starting to be an urgency, though, for all of those players chasing Lydia Ko. Gail, what's your sense of this putt, this birdie putt for Lydia? Very, very similar putt to GA's, about a six or seven inches inside GA's. Not exactly the same line, but same result. It will just go a little bit to her right. That's the first sort of wiggle that we've seen in her entire golf game so far today. Yeah, it's tough to discover she's human. That really is just a chance she, I'm sure, thought she would put the five shots would have been between her and Chella Choi. So it's a glimmer of hope for the remainder of the field. 15th hole looks like this. And this is tight. This is the one you really need that accuracy. 415 yards. Um, it is a pretty straightaway hole, even though the fairway has some contour in it, right in the driving area that is uh, closely pinched in um, by the big trees. Uh, the fairway pinches in also and becomes very narrow. A lot of players not taking a driver off the tee to avoid that narrowest part of the fairway. You play to quite a large green at 15. Um, the hole in a little easier hole location today, um, short of the center of the green and just a little bit to the left side but a lot of slope in this green from the back to the front. And uh, you get you have to get pretty lucky to get a putt that doesn't have a lot going on. So the amateur with a four shot lead and obviously at the British Open for the men, Adam Scott, it was right about now that Ernie Els did something magical up ahead and then Adam didn't completely fall apart, but just got into that run of bogeys. And that's what's gonna have to happen here because Lydia Cole has been just masterful. Five under for the day, 13 under for the round, clear by four. And again, working with her caddy, checking the winds, which are up a bit. How's it feel to you, Gail, down there? She's, she does have the wind coming into her face just a little bit on this shot. Well, you know, your caddy can play a part, and with so many players, the caddy does play a part. But in fact, regardless of your age, 
even though you're respectful of everyone around you if you're young, you have to be master of your own ship once you get on the golf course. And Judy, I think she's doing that very, very well. It's just going down the right side and finds the right-hand side of the fairway. It's great. What tempo? Slow is long, fast is short. And she is slow and long and leading by four shots. Playing the uh, 14th hole, 15th hole, I should say. Our coverage continues. Enjoying an historic performance by Lydia Ko here at the CN Canadian Women's Open. And on that note, we were all saddened to learn of the passing of Neil Armstrong, the astronaut yesterday at the age of 82, the first man on the moon, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Well, the first American in space was actually Alan Shepard when he went up with the Mercury in 1961. He followed with Apollo 14 in 1971, a mission that saw Shepard on the moon. And of course, he became the first man to golf. It's a six iron. A Wilson six iron. And Shepard, with that suit, with thick gloves and single handed, took two shots. The second, he said, he drove for miles and miles and miles. They got more dirt than. <laughs> That's the first one. Second one, he absolutely uh, smoked. And he was a big golf fan. He and his wife uh, are gone now, and their ashes are actually spread in the waters at Pebble Beach. He made his home in Pebble Beach, California. I know, and one, one connection to the golf course, Kermit Zarley, who won here at Vancouver Golf Club in 62, led at Pebble Beach. Bob Hope called him the man from the moon. So we're seeing this uh, over-the-moon performance by Lydia Cole. Oh, boy, nice putt there for Chella Joy. But again, Neil Armstrong, the family, I thought, said it best. Uh, we're going to have a blue moon here at the end of the month. August 31st will be the second full moon in the month of August. Uh, we'll all be wise to go out and if we have the chance, take a look and give a wink. Co 13 under is three now. Clear of Chella Choi as she makes that booty putt at 15 to get to within striking distance. One neat thing Alan Shepard said, he actually went up, as I said, as the first American after Gagarin went up to the uh, Soviets. He was asked what it felt like to be in that Mercury capsule on top of the Redstone rocket that would launch him into orbit. And Shepard said, I was thinking, every part of this ship was built by the low bidder. <laughs> that was like that story. Second shot at 15 for G.A. Shane. And Ron, she's got 166 to the flag. This is a 23 degree hybrid. And Judy, she launches this one so far up into the air. It's pretty fun to watch, comes down very softly. So uh, for the folks at home, a 23 degree hybrid, Gail, somewhere between a four and a five iron? Exactly. There's a cheer, so that's that's that Ernie Els moment. I remember looking at Adam Scott and wondering what was the cheer about. So something's happened somewhere on the course. Gee, he's going right at the flag. It's these hybrids very high, and you can see it settles down so gently on the green. It's not so much about spinning it, but it's a gentle landing. Bear aware, that's what they say here in Coquitlam. All right, it's going to be the roar. Taylor Cotu, 25-year-old from Dallas, Texas. And the only snag, fortunately for Taylor, even par on the day-to-day, -day, four under for the tournament. Won't be enough to send her to the clubhouse in uh, a position to challenge. And three hundred and twenty-eight thousand dollars on the season. Top prize today, three hundred thousand out of a two million dollar purse. Back to our leader. I don't even know what to say. I got goosebumps, Judy. That was a, a grit twenty-two degree. Yeah, if you if the other players are waiting for a door to open, um, I, I don't see that happening. They just uh, need a birdie barrage on the last few holes. To 16 we go, and NB Park is on the tee dot. 
I love this hole, this dog leg left. It's turning a little bit for needs to get to the left side of the fairway. The pin is tucked right on the right hand side. Yeah, and she has been trying to draw the ball more to uh, shake off a little bit of a cut off the tee. That's going to be a tough position. Uh, here was Chella Choi earlier. And she did put it in a great position. She's yeah. down the left hand side. Beautiful draw the ball swing. As you both mentioned. There's a trouble on the right-hand side of the green with a bunker and a huge Douglas fir tree that can come into play. To 15 now, the second shot at the par 4, 15th for Stacy Lewis. And Stacy has 152 yards. This is a 7-iron. Three good opportunities. Bruce Rainey's with Anna Norquist. You're on, she bogeyed 15. You're on 16, had a great drive, but pulled her second shot left of the green, has chipped to here, and has this for her par. Fifth place finish, the best for Anna Norquist in this season, so a very good week for her, and uh, something good right here at the end could make it even better. That was a good cheer. <laughs> Tied for fourth at the moment. Good side on the left side and this remains tied for fourth. Lydia Cole, the 15 year old, continues to show the rest of the professionals what it's all about. The town's called Coquitlam. The rest of them are hoping. Cole quits on him. Final round of the CN Canadian Women's Opens at the Vancouver Golf Club, and we began the day with Lydia Ko and Chella Choi as front runners being chased down by major victory golfer Stacy Lewis, J.I. Shin, NB Park, and the kids have just proven to be extremely resilient, and in the case of Ko, brilliant. We'll get a chance to see her uh, birdie putt here to extend that lead. Some of the other, Suzanne Pedersen, one in nine, uh, 2009. Catherine Hall, one in 2008. And let's uh, let's go to Gail Graham on the green. Well, Lydia's got about eight feet, fairly straight up the hill. It may try to slide just a hair to the right. Pretty comparable distance to the last hole, Gail. Absolutely. Um, you know, in this one, she can be a little bit aggressive and and uh, take a run at it. Not that she's taken a run at anything today. Very good speed. She appears to be very, very comfortable. Brooke Henderson of Smith's Falls, Ontario. It was a nice story here at the Canadian Open. A 14-year-old, but in round one, despite hitting 15 of 18 greens, made 38 putts, and that was the difference. She just could not get the putter to work for her. Nice moment there with Stacy Lewis. Uh, kind of now she's enthralled with the young player's game also, so cheering her on. Chella Choi. Judy, this is from 150. This is seven iron. Indy Park just put it in about six feet in front of her. So if they're playing for money. Pressure's on Chella. <laughs> pressure's on. <laughs> Who knows, maybe they do this on Tuesdays. I don't know, but shot for shot for money. Yeah. Again, the $300,000 cannot be claimed by an amateur. So it bumps down and goes to the top professional. You can win the first place prize money of 300,000 by finishing second if Cole wins. So they are playing for money. They are playing for big money. <laughs> 48 of the top 50 on the money earnings list are here at, or were at the Vancouver celebration of the Canadian Open. There's the 22 year olds totals for the season. And that's good. She was uh, 25th last year. 
really solid season. Yeah, she has really been moving up that world ranking number. Um, her banker will be happy, and uh, uh, she and her family are pretty well healed now for traveling the tour and just hanging on until she gets that first win. I think she's going to explode a little bit as a player. Now the dog leg left 16th hole, and Gail Graham's with the uh, leader. I, I got to tell you, there's nothing more uh, sort of rewarding and makes me feel good as a professional to watch the reaction of G.A. Shin and Stacey Lewis when uh, when Lydia made that putt on the last hole. G.A. turned around and went, wow, and they both started giggling. And they're, uh, they're as excited as she is, which is pretty cool. She yeah. just high-fived the crowd all the way from the green to this tee, Judy. Gail, that is uh, that's great for people to know about uh, these fierce competitors. Um, you know, when you see something special happening right before your eyes, win, lose, or draw, you're still witnessing something special. I think they're a little bit in awe of her right now. And this is a beauty tee shot. Another good one. Maybe a little bit to the right side, would you say, Judy? No? It's, it's okay. not on the sprinkler line. I think it's going to be okay, though. She may not have hugged the right side enough to uh, struggle with the whole location. All right, six under for Lydia Cole on the day today, the best round of this day. So coming in with all that pressure. The Miracle Match Program, one of the uh, highlights of our get together each and every year. Let's go to LA Free. There are two things that this tournament is really known for. Number one is obviously the quality of the golf, which has been spectacular, culminating in our final round today. But number two, it may be even more important, is the CN Miracle Match. And for every dollar that all of you help donate, CN matches it. And joining us right now is the president and CEO, Claude Mongeau. And Claude, why is this important to you? You know what, on top of great weather and great golf, I think this is the precious moment of this whole tournament. When we get to give back to the community here in Vancouver, in particular the BC Children's Foundation, and we have a big number here to announce as a donation for this very worthy cause. Well, let's not have any more suspense then. You're joined right now by Terry Nicholas, who's the CEO of the BC Children's Hospital Foundation, and why don't we unveil that number? Let's do that. <laughs> well, the wow says it all, Terry. It's very impressive by both CN and all the viewers who help contribute. What will you be able to do with this? Uh, with these funds, we'll be able to buy and purchase uh, new equipment uh, so that we can provide the very best uh, treatments to children. Uh, we'll be able to provide training to our already world-class uh, doctors so that they are up-to-date in their knowledge. And importantly, we'll be able to support research uh, which really makes a difference in the lives of children in the future, uh, discovering potentially cures for diseases like cancer and cystic fibrosis and diabetes. Oh, well, that's tremendous stuff and great news for all the families who need this and could use this, and I'm sure they all thank everybody too, and CN. I know one of the people who feels that way is this year's child ambassador, Natasha Fuchuk, who's been on a number of features this weekend with Lori Keane. And Lori, when you met Natasha and spent time with her, what was that experience? experience like? Well, it's been an unbelievable relationship that I've had with CN over the last seven years in the CN Miracle Match, and this number is huge. I can think of 1.8 million reasons why <laughs> I love CN. Um, and meeting Natasha, just another step in, in the journey that uh, for her health and to see how easy it is for the kids to give back of their time, um, we've got a great ambassador. Well, and one of the big highlights this week, Natasha, is seeing that beautiful smile of yours, which we've seen in several features, and now with this presentation, what is the whole experience of being a child ambassador meant for you? Well, for me, it's really important that I've been able to give back to the hospital that's done so much for me. It's been a lot of fun doing this, and I'm so honored that I can help um, give back to the hospital. Well, you've done a fantastic job, and the only thing I'm jealous about is that you've had more airtime than I have this weekend. <laughs> Congratulations. You've done a great job, and thank you once again to CN and to all of you who helped make this possible by donating as we send you back to more fourth round coverage with Ron McLean. Ron? Elliot, thanks kindly. Here's how you can donate. We want to throw up the uh, telephone numbers. You can obviously log on to cnmiraclematch.ca, 1-888-663-3033, or locally 604-875-2444. And our thanks to CN and to Lori Kane.
turned pro at 29 in 1993. Her dad, Jack, I can't say enough about uh, Jack and the work he did at Brudenell and Belvedere in Prince Edward Island. And Pride of PEI, a wonderful ambassador here. Chella Choi now has a chance for her birdie to go to 11 under. Dawn's with Chella. She had a remarkable shot in here. She's about six, eight feet. I think this putt is going to be a little bit quick, and hopefully she doesn't read too much into it. I don't, I don't see it doing a whole lot. Of course, it depends on her speed. But as we've said before, I think uh, Co has the tournament in hand. Don't ever like to say those things, but this is all about money now. Money, money, money. <laughs> and lots of it. Michelle Joy should finish this off well. Um, as she sits uh, second right now in the tournament, she will go over the $1 million mark in her career, and she just turned 22 yesterday. Did you get over the million mark, Judy? You know, <laughs> I played 22 years, and I didn't get over the million dollar mark. So thank heaven for people in television. You know, I, I was thinking, Judy, about that with your first woman to go over 100,000, and you went over 150,000. So that was, oh! that was a quantum leap back in 1976. But if you were down, if you were in a tide for six, you were getting less than $1,000. So for you to win that 100,000 was amazing. My first win, um, I got a check for $1,875, so I don't know that I could play under this kind of pressure. Hannah Norquist for her birdie to move to nine under. Again, we're all talking about the $300,000 first place money goes to the top professional. Cole can't claim it. So yeah, the... Uh, Let's see, the year you won in 77, you earned $12,000, and that's solid. Sandra Post was right there, and she only won 1200 She was tied for eighth. Lydia Coe by four here in the fourth round of the CN, Canadian Women's Open. Welcome back to Vancouver Golf Club. We're on the 16th hole with the leaders. Lydia Coe is in this group with Stacey Lewis and G.A. Shin. And here's Lewis' second shot at the par four. Just in the right-hand rough, 156 yards. She just needs to be careful uh, not to turn this over. And we'll try to hit a little bit of a cut. That's going at the left-hand side of the green, though. As we saw with Suzanne Patterson. Yeah, day. on the right, the right side there with the right hole location, very difficult. And then you get in the rough, and it is quite difficult to cut the ball when the rough's trying to turn the blade over. This was while we were away at 16, the second shot for J.A. Shin. No, she did not hit a very good tee shot. She has 201 from this position. Boy, way a long way back. So you saw two shots played from the rough and you saw the difficulty, how the difficulty changes and now this from the fairway. And this a little seven iron. Hold on to her finish to make it cut, Judy. Very nice. G.A. Shin just walked by and told me, this is making me feel old. <laughs> well, you were talking, I mean, it's an amateur, and nobody likes to get beat by a kid, much less an amateur, Judy. And I, I just think, I remember, and it's neat that Shin and uh, Lewis are going along with it and happy for her because who wouldn't be impressed? I remember when Lincecum won at Nabisco and Christy McPherson had hit a, almost aced the 17th and Brittany was so happy for her and I was really kind of happy when Brittany came back and ended up winning the tournament because I thought that karma was good for her. There's a look at the amateurs who have done well, but this is, you know, the first couple are early when the tour wasn't like it is now. Yeah, and Catherine Lacoste, I'm pretty sure, would be the youngest here. She was 22 when she came to the United States and won the U.S. Women's Open. And yes, she is Catherine Lacoste of the Lacoste family um, and the famed clothing. Uh, she, not too long after that, retired and had a family and uh, didn't play a whole lot of competitive golf after that. That's a crock. <laughs> I'm going to let that go. <laughs> I do like you joke stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Lydia Coe, 15 years old having the time of her life, not appearing to stress about anything. This is no accident. I cannot say it um, 
more convincingly. Uh, this is a most talented young player. I can't see anything that she does not do well. She seems to have the head for the game, and uh, she's also got the lead. Over Chella Choi, South Korea, in second right now, and there's her tee shot up ahead. How's it look, Don? Another fairway. Yeah. So playing well, I mean, Choi's three under on the day to day. Nayeon Choi's four under. Narquist four under. But there you go, as you said, Judy at six under par on the round today. Here's Stacy Lewis now with her third and sixty. Quick little story about Stacy Lewis um, when she first came on the scene her dad was caddying for her and I talked to him one day at the US Open actually at Interlock and, and talk about being master of your own ship he said yes I am her father at all times until I put the bag on my shoulder and then she's the boss and I mentioned that scoliosis story but if you want to follow Stacy Lewis she has her own website as many of the golfers do Stacy's a real nice way to, to watch her work through the years. To 17 on the tee in B Park. It's heading a little bit right, Ron. Could catch that bunker. Bunkers at the right that are in play. The course official just blocking our view. Shin's third at 16. I wouldn't necessarily consider this a birdie putt. Uh, looking at a three, four foot circle around the hole just to try to get close. This will slide from her left to right as it comes down the green. Flatter than some, but still really tri tricky to nestle this close. Great puck. Terrific puck. Now, if Lydia Cole birdies here, she would move to seven under for her round today. She would have a chance to flirt with the course record, which is 63. She, she said uh, before round two that she wanted to shoot four under. I can't imagine she thought to herself as she woke up this morning, I'm going to shoot the course record. And the round of 72 yesterday included two birdie misses inside of three feet and three three-putt greens. That will tell you how well she has played. Here you see the second shot on the par 4 18th for Nayeon Choi. Just going to sneak on. So imagine eight under, but six shots behind Cole. And here they are again. Brian Alexander, the club member, 63 year old, former BC amateur champion. Never really wanted to pursue his golf. He was just happy to enjoy life. He obviously knows a thing or two about this game. A lot about this golf course, Ron. Don't you think his age, his experience, everything about him being alongside her has been a calming influence? I think his demeanor, um, you know, he he's, he's, it seems to be a very calm, confident man and uh, gentle. And I think that's been very helpful to her. Definitely a young look at 63. Yeah. That's a good point. Somebody's just saying that the caddy won't get a cut of the $300,000. The caddy has had the experience of a lifetime. Yes. Okay. This is as good as having done it yourself. It's a magical story for sure. Choi second now at the 17th. It's been 136. Plays a little tiny bit uphill today. The flag is on 15 paces. That was an eight iron. That will be one fast putt there, Ron. Stacy Lewis will have this for her part. You know, with that Brian Alexander story, I remember somebody once saying, you can nice. aim for three things in life. You can aim to make a name for yourself, to make money, or to make a difference. 
and how you prioritize those three it tells you what kind of a person you are. There's no doubt Alexander is making a name and a difference. Jay Shin now just to tap in. Big par. These are good pars. Lewis and Shin. Fifteen-year-old from New Zealand, Lydia Ko continues to be the one to watch. She's at 14 under par, six under for her day-to-day, -day, and she has designs on the CN Canadian Women's Open in Coquitlam. Judy Lydia Ko is an amateur trying to win here on the LBGA Tour. First to do it since Joanne Carner in '69, and there's a, there's just it's a magic storyline, and it, you're extremely impressed as is everyone here. Well, as we watch her drive here at 17. You know, in the last seven or eight years on the LBGA Tour in women's golf. Um, we watched Michelle Wee grow up, and she certainly had her chances to win at 14, 15, 16. Um, we've watched Lexi Thompson work her way into the professional game, but she had a chance to win as an amateur. And these extraordinary players were not able to close the deal. We might see it happen in just, just a few minutes. Joy's birdie putt. I'll have that for... Uh... 10 under is where she sits, four back of Lydia Cole, but one ahead of NB Park in the chase for the top money. The amateur can't keep the 300,000. Nayan Choi, US Open champion. Oh, my no gosh. That's a great attempt. So she's eight under. Chella Choi at 10 under, Inby Park at 9 under, and then there are four square at 8 under. Norquist, Nayan, Stacy Lewis, and G.A. Shin. Two strokes separating the six women who could pick up that first place money. Sydney Michaels had a wonderful uh, effort here. Seventh last week at Portland. That was a big effort for her. Gaining a lot of experience now being in this position on Sunday. And it was her CME qualifying event last week in Portland, so she's going to be there in mid November in Naples, Florida. Fine. Getting something going here um, at the end of, near the end of the season for a rookie. Indy Park has a pretty good. I don't know at what time we start calculating dollars per foot, but I just want to mention that the crowd buzz every time Lydia tees off, the people are laughing, they're giggling, they're they're witnessing something special and it's filtering up to the crowd in front of us. But anyway, back to Envy. That's good, Don. No, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's it's our a story today, right? remarkable story. It is. It really and is. And I was wondering what it'll be like around the green, the 18th green, because when Lori Kane is an example, and you can certainly talk to, uh, you know, you and Lisa Walters winning back-to-back, -back, but when Kane won, the CN ambassador, she won in August 2000 after nine runner-up finishes, and it had been a long time, and everybody said she's just, you know, a choke artist. It's never going to happen. Well, when she got in a position to win at the Michelob Light Classic, the forecast was for rain, and there was a chance she was going to win it because of that. But they played, and she played great, and all the golfers, or at least a lot of her friends, canceled flights, surrounded the green, and when she putted out, gave her that beer shower that's conventional, but it was a particularly special one for, for her. And you were saying the same when Annika Sornstein was in line to break 60. You know, all of these players um, realize what it takes to get to this point, how hard you work and how invested you and your family and everyone is in what you do. Um, the putt of Vicki Hurst, a big one from up above the hole. Um, she's another young player that everything is invested in her young career. But um, because everybody has, everybody goes through a lot of the same things and everybody knows what it takes, uh, there is a great appreciation um, 
for a special happening and or greatness. And in Annika Sorenstam's case, I remember I was there when players were fixated on the leaderboard uh, watching her shoot 59 and every single player was rooting her on. They wanted a woman to post at 59 and she did it without an eagle. It was a spectacular round of golf. But there is a great admiration for this young player. So that awaits at 18. Assuming that nothing untoward comes her way. Choi now just to finish up her part. Lori, I know, and certainly you, Judy, uh, experience what it is to love the feeling of having to wait to win, to have built a foundation. And this is, this is not her story. Uh, Lydia Ko is just a morning glory. So Choi slides back into this group. She's with Inby Park. Now, Nayeon Choi. We've got six golfers a shot apart. Big miss there, though, for Chella Choi. Yes. Um, there, there is no time left now. And I don't mean to make too much of this rooting for this young player to finish this off and, and players doing that, because I will also tell you there are going to be some players in their hotel room tonight um, kind of chewing a nail that they didn't play a little better and that they could not keep pace with a 15-year-old. That's just, uh, that's the nature of the game, the nature of competition, and uh, that's the absolute truth. I'm pretty sure I recall Co saying, uh, if I shoot 68 and someone beats me with a 66, well, that's okay. What can you do? I'm a great believer, and if you play as well as you can and someone beats you, you know, that's all you could do. You cannot control what the other person does in this game. You might have a little effect on it, though. Hmm. Well, I remember we had a conversation about Na Yun Choi, who is now the U.S. Open champion, but we'll just watch Jia Shin's approach here at 17. This from 135 yards, the 9-iron. But on that score, I remember Suzanne Patterson, who won the 2009 Canadian Open, and she and Na Yun Choi at Portland uh, came to the 18th tee, and there was just a little gamesmanship. Nothing none to worry, but just... Suzanne wouldn't give her the time of day, and it was cool, you know, and trying to just give her that competitive coolness. And that could have happened today. It's it, obviously the way it's unfolding. It's just it's not a factor. But you could have expected maybe Stacy Lewis, knowing what it takes, to have played that role, but didn't didn't ever get the chance. So she'll be chewing on a nail tonight. <laughs> I'm going to promise you. <laughs> and uh, further up the fairway. Well, she bombed that one off the tee. Uh, Stacy had 131. Lydia has 109 to the hole. This was just the pitching wedge. She said it longer each day. It just seems as if she's become more confident. She's just kind of letting it rip. Shooting her tempo as we've gone along today has become more and more consistent and fluid and fun. Another beautiful shot. Once again, the last to putt for Birdie. Her teacher said uh, in the last months they have worked on a lighter grip pressure, and that sure works under pressure. Sure does. Final round coverage of the CN Canadian Women's Open, where history is in the making. Lydia Ko, a 15-year-old, leads by five. An amateur 15-year-old Lydia Ko. That's Inby Park on the 18th tee. And Inby Park has not been out of the top ten on the LPGA Tour since early June. She will not be out of the top ten today. In fact, uh, she might get in there with the first, third, and second of the last three weeks. Behind front runners, Stacey Lewis, Lydia Cole, and J.A. Shin to begin the day. And there you see our leaderboard. Stacey Lewis checking her line. Gail, who's away here? G.A. is uh, first to putt here. And this will be very slick. The front right part of the screen is the lowest part of the green. And this will be uh, a little bit right to left. 
So she's kind of putting right down the speed slot. Absolutely. Pretty straight for her. Gail Graham and Judy Rankin impressed with the uh, lengthening of Lydia Ko's game here through the four rounds. Gail won her first tournament by reaching a par 5, 18th and 2 to beat Tammy Green, right? That's, Gail? that's exactly right. Um, I, I don't think even then, um, I was seven years into my career on tour and um, I didn't have the control or the shots or the demeanor um, that this young lady and the poise that she is showing today. And, um, this is, uh, I've, got, I've had goosebumps out here all day long. Um, and what's really made me really proud is how she's carried herself, but also how the crowd has been receptive to her and her playing partners, um, especially the last few holes, have had grins on their faces every time she hits a shot. They're, they're eating it up just like she is. Well, she's clearly not only mature and a wonderful player, um, she's a pretty pleasant young girl to be around. Judy, I think between GA and, and Stacy, it's kind of a knowing. They know that position. They've seen that before in themselves. So Anna Norquist is back at seven under, and this is a par putt for her. So that will take her out of the running for the 300,000. Second place money today is actually first place money. Lydia Cole is an amateur, cannot take the $300,000 check. She'll receive the trophy. Certainly some exemptions because of this. CME, she's allowed to play in that as a result of a win here today. And that's the only way you qualify for CME is if the amateur wins an event on the tour. And she'll have, if she'd like, a gift certificate from our pro shop for $750 money. That is a bit humorous. She might need extra golf balls, you think? Yeah. Get it out, get out. Boy, the, you know, her speed today has been so good compared to yesterday when she charged a lot of putts. She she hit um, a number of putts that were um, nicely online, but she just charged them so much that, uh, you know, we were getting the horseshoe and she'd have a longer one coming back. She did not allow that to be any part of the conversation today. People sometimes wonder where these very, very young players are in men's golf, and I know there are some that are very good. Um, but just the fact of how we grow and how we mature, girls tend to um, reach a maturity level physically earlier than boys do. A lot of boys will grow until they're 19 or 20 years old. That's not the case with young girls. Chella Choi following that bogey that took her back into a tie with Inby Park at 9-under. That's her drive at 18. It's just off the fairway, so it's not a great uh, spot to be in there. Now Shin. At 17 feet. Have this bit to tidy up. Cole will be going back to school. We're in the winter season in New Zealand, of course, so she's missing a lot of school and still with the British Open with the amateur team tournament in Turkey and now with CME. She's got a lot of uh, golf ahead of her, but she has two grades left, grades 12 and 13 they go to in New Zealand. And she's, she was thinking of dropping math. That was an option she could prioritize what courses she takes uh, in grade 13. And she was thinking, I just might ditch the, the math part of it. But she better keep that map. She's got a lot of uh, totaling to do, primarily at the bank. The CN Canadian Women's Open final round coverage continues from Vancouver Golf Club in Coquitlam, British Columbia. Next. Trophy is about to be won by the youngest person ever to claim one on the LPGA Tour and the first amateur in 43 years. Discuss on social media, www.facebook.com slash CBC Sports or our Twitter feed at CBC Sports. Cole moving to the 18th tee now for will be the finishing hole of an historic round and an historic tournament. 
in another good golf swing. She is a New Zealand citizen. Um, when she took up the game of golf, her parents did not play golf. I don't know if they have inspired, if she has inspired them to start, but it was an aunt who actually introduced her to the game. Gave her two clubs and uh, the rest is history. And we'll, she's paying homage a little bit to Tiger Woods in her attire. We'll come back to that thought in a second. Here's Chella Choi, second shot now. This was uh, actually a moment ago at 18. This from 194, really thick lie. And they're in B Parks. So these are all uh, just off tape, so superimposed, in fact. But it's the Lydia Ko story at 14 under par. She's in command of a victory at Coquitlam. Back at the Vancouver Golf Club and the CN Canadian Women's Open, NB Park, her third shot at 18. It's important that she gets this tight. She's a 10 under. She's in second place alone. That would be 300,000 her way if she can hold that second spot. How about that? How about that? That is a player who's gone first, third, second in her last three starts. Um, she does it again today, except she's not going to beat Lydia Cole. This is a this is no ordinary uh, day. Michelle, we just tweeted. Wow, I am so impressed with how Cole is playing right now. The girl's good. This girl is good. Michelle, Wee, our 2010 champion, and right into the year ago, failed to make the cut this year at the Vancouver Golf Club. You see the galleries again. We just kind of wonder what the scene will be like around. Very few of the players are uh, pals, so she's kind of... They often say winning is a lonely experience. And that there's depth to that remark. But this one's a joyous and unique victory. Jella Choi, meantime. So Park did go to 10 under with that remarkable third shot. This par putt is from about, oh, 25 feet at least. And you have to look back and think the little putt she missed at 17 just kind of got in her head. And she just uh, has just fallen apart here. And I hope she can roll this in. Don, how many times do we say that that little putt that you missed on the second hole in the first day was just as important, but it never feels like that? It never does. You're right, Judy. I feel so bad because she has played well all day long. And uh, let's just hope she runs this in. She and her dad are just a, a lot of fun to watch work together. They seem to have a great rapport. And um, uh, she's a happy and hardworking player. She will win soon, like you said. You and I will confer the day she wins. <laughs> Twitter? Maybe. So you see there and Indy Park. Sydney, her brother uh, Greg, also went to uh, college in California. He went to USC and was actually a tennis player. She's the youngest of eight in the family. Greg had a brief pro career. Her great grandmother went to UCLA, where Sydney went to school. Has a degree in, well, she majored in history. Last two events on the Futures Tour last year. To get her card, one in Georgia, one in New York. Over two weeks in a row of really playing well and being in the heat of things on Sunday. Great experience and uh, just the kind of experience you, you need to kickstart a professional career. Stacey Lewis will be away with her second shot here at 18. 
and run. She's uh, 197. She's got her hybrid, which is a 17 degree. Going to grip it a little bit. This is not a very good lie. Trying to chase that up there. It's going a little too far right. She shot around a 63 at the Avion just a few weeks ago. She seemed like she had things in hand when they went to the weekend. And the weekend played a little bit like uh, today. Not quite what she was looking for and a little frustration. And this is a recording. Co, dead center. <laughs> Long. Uh, well positioned, exactly. This is 187 yards. A 20 degree hybrid, kind of like a four iron. You got to grip down just a little. And this is going right at the center of the green. Only there is just a little adrenaline rushing through those veins. I don't care how calm she looks. I'm in great admiration of the calmness with which she plays, but uh, this has got to excite you. The four shot lead for Lydia takes all pressure off that lie. And then G.A. Shin just to join them up around the green. Green's open. 184 yards. And this is her seven wood. Six times. If youth could know, if age but could, here comes the 15 year old Lydia Cole. to give her some support and also give her the stage. And again, uh, because she's uh, from South Korea and there's such a huge Korean population in the greater Vancouver area. The annual Korean Heritage Day was held here on August the 6th this year, Blue Mountain Park in Coquitlam. So there's a huge contingent of expats from South Korea will be cheering for her. As we've mentioned, she moved to New Zealand as a five-year-old, so she's a Kiwi. But she's got, got to have a good feeling, and there's a lot of family and friends. Some stayed back from New Zealand. Her mom and dad, Young and Tina, are here. Brian Alexander's a uh, club member doing the caddying. Magic. He's getting a lot of the a lot yes. of the congratulations here. All she's got to do is little hit a little chunk and run from that uh, bad lie behind the green. Just get the ball somewhere on the green where she can two putt, and uh, this is a big celebration. Let's go to Elliot Friedman. All right, our second place finisher as it stands is uh, Envy Park. And uh, Envy, you've been getting used to the top 10. What did you like most about your round today? Um, I mean, it was a tough putting day out there. I mean, I mean, I gave my, myself a lot of chances out there, but um, hope, I mean, not everything went in, but I mean, I'm really happy the way I finished today, and especially last toy was great. It is a quirk of the system that because Lydia Ko is an amateur, the first place money falls to second place, which is in your position. It's a pretty strange situation. What do you think about it all? Yeah, it is. It doesn't happen that often, and I think I was the lucky one this week. I mean, I didn't play as good as her. Obviously, I finished second, but I get first place money, so I think I was just lucky. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Inby Park, our second place finisher out of the bunker, Stacy Lewis, Ron. Shots, shots away. Shots. 
It's a nice shot. It's a pretty long bunker shot from that right-hand bunker. It sits well away from the green. Now this tricky little pitch chip for Lydia. And Judy, you call it, it is a chunk and run. This is, uh, got to hit it kind of like a bunker shot, um, but just a formality. Great to walk up here in the green. Her mom's sitting just to the right of the green with some friends, and, and uh, she's pretty excited. A little tough to go back to school. What is that song? How do you keep them down on the farm after they've seen Broadway? <laughs> and how do you just be a 15-year-old in school after you've done this? And after you've been low amateur in the open, and after you've won the U.S. Amateur, and what a big summer. Well, goodness knows we had that conversation, didn't we, a lot, shall we, were the two possibly in marriage. It's perfect. It's perfect. She doesn't understand that uh, she doesn't have to hit a good shot right now. She just can't hit a bad shot. Love the reaction, Judy. Yeah, her Great. expectations are much higher. <laughs> Greatest feeling in the world is to know you have a shot or two to spare on the last hole. That was a little honoring lids. By the way, the Tiger Woods discussion. You were you were noticing today as you were doing some research. That she's got the Tiger Woods red on Sunday red. Yeah, well, I was on the internet, and those who know me well would know that's a frightening thing. I'm I'm not very literate, but uh, trying to learn all I could about Lydia because. Um, Clearly, today was her day. And uh, those of you who go to things like Google and this and that on the Internet, um, I find this little strip of things on the right side of the page that says other things you might like to view. And I looked at a lot of them, and they would say, you know, 800 viewers, 400 viewers. There was one that said, how to swing like Tiger Woods. It had 6,048,431 views. I uh, was just um, very taken by that. And, uh, you know, the number isn't just a little bit greater. It is phenomenally greater. And we were just talking, uh, Lydia's swing might be one of those that will be up on the right side. And uh, would you like to swing like Lydia Ko? Tiger, incidentally, five over today at the Barclays. So I know a website he can go to. Yeah. <laughs> he should. He should check the. Uh, might find this interesting. Ironically, uh, uh, Lydia is uh, from New Zealand, but Tiger's the All Blacks because of the uh, scoring today. She's got the All Reds and the Runaway at 14 under par. Tiger has certainly made um, the red shirt famous on Sunday. And uh, whenever you see a young player don one, you know that's what they're thinking. Yeah. Talking about the Lydia Ko Tiger Woods connection, here's one that's going to make us all feel old. She was born 11 days after Tiger Woods won his first Masters in 1997. Yeah, I know she went out yesterday with uh, Chella Choi and Maura Dunn, 41 year old. So their ages combined didn't equal 41. Stacy Lewis, 27, playing alongside, effectively twice her age. And there are, there are a lot of young players, girls and boys, um, who are exceptionally good. Um, but this stands apart from anything else we've seen. stage well and if you just want to take take the game apart today um, 
the the bogey on the scorecard on the front nine was quite a good shot uh, at the seventh hole, the par three, and she just kind of bounded it just barely over the back of the green. Uh, couldn't get that up and down. And the shot here at 18, uh, we all saw it. It was struck extremely well, either a little bit too much club or a little bit too much adrenaline, but uh, this has been fairly flawless. Stacy Lewis now to a main at eight under par. Just two back of that 300,000. So we have a four way tie. Uh, unfortunately, Stacy will slide back and join Anna Norquist at seven under par. So second place money will be split three ways. Kim Cole can't keep the 300,000 as an amateur. Lydia Cole, 16 months younger than Lexi Thompson when she won. We were saying youngest to win on tour and the first amateur since 1969. 15 years, four months, three days. So many great golf courses in New Zealand and Australia um, to play and um, for for young players to learn so you, you don't go to other parts of the world and play golf courses that all of a sudden are a lot harder or a lot better than what you know The Olympic City of Vancouver saw the kid Sidney Crosby do something pretty special a couple of years ago. There's a new kid in town, Lydia Cole by name. And she's just put the coal in Coquitlam. Brian Alexander will have stories to tell for a very long time. Water. <laughs> she's not holding up the drink. That's funny. Oh. New, new version of Poppy's Pond. Jessica Corda. All right, Lydia Cole. We can officially say she's wet behind the ears. Our champion. We'll have uh, lots of time for the ceremony. You'll hear from uh, Lydia's wonderful interview, having spent that 10 years in the city of Sales, Auckland, New Zealand. So she's fluent and she's a great personality. You'll enjoy her charm and hear what she thinks were the keys to her success when we continue our coverage. The trophy presentation at the 2012 edition of the CN Canadian Women's Open is just around the corner at the Vancouver Golf Club. Welcome back to the Vancouver Golf Club as Lydia Ko signs an autograph and signs her scorecard as she seals the deal with a 68, 68, 72, and a 67 today. She took over the lead on the 17th hole of round two, Montina. And there's the all blacks flag that is celebrating a Kiwi triumph at the CN Canadian Women's Open. Pretty exciting. And Brian Alexander will grab the uh, maple leaf. So some really neat touches uh, around this historic performance by the 15-year-old kid. And 
You know, uh, Sandra Post presenting Jessica Shepley with the top Canadian honours was a nice moment today. Well, Sandra's hero was Marilyn Smith, and there's a big tournament at the start of the LPGA season, as you know, uh, Judy. And Marilyn talked about the uh, resurgence in the LPGA Tour. The fact that when she was uh, young and on tour, when they were the founding uh, members back in the 50s, they used to go to ballparks and hit golf balls to convince the ball fans that women's golf was legit, or they'd go to a boxing match, step in the ring, and challenge all the fans to come to a real fight. It's come a long way, and with Lexi Thompson and Michelle Wee and now Lydia Ko, just uh, really a, a nice defining performance here today. Three members from our effort here in Vancouver will qualify for the CME tournament in November in Naples, Florida. Lydia Ko, as champion, can go on. She's an amateur, but they will take a winner on an LPGA event. Jane Raw and Katrina Matthew, who played well, uh, especially yesterday, has qualified for Naples. Katrina Matthew, uh, her home is in North Berwick, Scotland, and uh, she has two little girls, and she and her husband Graham are uh, scrambling all the time, trying to figure out whether to be in the U.S. and play, whether to be home with the girls, whether to have the girls with them. Uh, there's a lot of challenges in being a family and playing this tour. She was the first Scot to win the British Open, the Women's British Open. And uh, Kiwi captures Canada, Elliot. Oh, what a fantastic story it was, Ron. Uh, Lydia Ko, along with her caddy, Brian Alexander, who's a member here. And Lydia, here are all the stats. You're the youngest winner on the LPGA Tour ever. You're the first amateur to win on the LPGA Tour since 1969. What does all of that mean to you? Uh, it means a lot. And, I mean, it's a professional event. And, you know, I just came to, you know, make the cut and, you know, play my best. But... In the end, I won, and I'm going to get the trophy, and it's, it's amazing. And I won the U.S. Amateur two weeks ago, so it's been a really great couple of weeks. You had a bit of a home course advantage, and Brian here, who's a member and a great player himself, how did he help you out through this weekend? Um, especially today, you know, he helped, me, um, he helped me read the lies, and, you know, when I get nervous, I don't see it properly, and something could be wrong. And, yeah, it was really great to have Brian on my bag, and he knows of course so well so you know it was really relieving and it was one part that I didn't need to think about. Brian what did you think about this young player? First of all am I the oldest caddy <laughs> now that uh, to go along with the youngest winner? Uh, remarkable I didn't have to do anything I just confirmed the odd time and just stood back in awe this remarkable performance. Just before we let you go to go get the trophy, uh, you've talked about how much you love your amateur status. You've talked about how much you're looking forward to going and be maybe becoming a college player at maybe Stanford, which will be great years. Does any of you say, boy, I would love to have that winner's check, though? Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, you know, in my speech um, for the New South Wales Open as well, I was like, oh, man, I don't get that money. <laughs> yeah, but I mean... It's, it's what happens, and I, you know, I've come to realize, you know, it doesn't matter. And when I turn pro, I'll get that money. So hopefully, I'll have many wins when I turn pro. Boy, the way you play, nobody's going to bet against you. Thank you very much, Lydia. Congratulations to you and Brian. Go get your trophy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. Well, we'll have to look into that oldest, youngest uh, distinction, but there is the youngest golfer to win on the LPGA Tour. Lydia Ko does it at the age of 15 years, four months, and three days. Lexi Thompson, 16 months older when she captured Navistar one year ago. Some of the more impressive performances all the way back to Morgan Pressel's breakthrough at the Kraft Nabisco. Hugs all around. No 300,000, but a grand time. We'll be back with the ceremony here at Vancouver Golf Club next. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Scott Simmons, CEO of Golf Canada, and I'm very proud to be your MC for our presentation ceremonies this afternoon. I'd like to call upon Diane dunlap Bear, President of Golf Canada, for her remarks. Bonjour et bienvenue. Welcome, everyone. I'd like to congratulate the Vancouver Golf Club for hosting this tournament. Wonderful staff, the members, the superintendent, David Kennedy, club president, Barry Bompas, and general manager, Brent Gow. Congratulations. These events don't happen without the wonderful volunteers and the wonderful volunteer committee. I'd like to congratulate Paul Batchelor, Brian Cook, Byron Cook, sorry, and Pat Thompson from Golf Canada. You, 
A very special thank you to CN and all of our other sponsors and event supporters. And I'd now like to call upon Scott Simmons to present two very prestigious awards. Thank you, Diane. And before we get to the championship trophy, we do have very, two very special awards. Sandra Post needs no introduction. She's arguably the greatest Canadian professional female golfer this country has ever seen. We are thrilled that she is here is with us today. And we have a low Canadian medal in her honor. And I'd like to call on Sandra to now present that medal to Jessica Shepley of Oakville, Ontario. Another name that needs no introduction is Marlene Stewart Street, the greatest amateur golfer this country has ever seen, a member of the Canadian Golf Hall of Fame, as is Sandra, and the only Canadian in the World Golf Hall of Fame. And we have a special presentation as well for the low amateur in our championship. And we'd now like to call upon Sandra again to present the, the Marlene Stewart Street low amateur medal to Lydia Cope. I'd now like to call upon a great friend of Canadian golf, CN CEO and President, Claude Mangeau, for some remarks. Claude. Thank you, uh, Scott. I guess it doesn't get better than that. Beautiful weather in Vancouver. <laughs> golf Canada, the Vancouver Golf Club, who put a great venue. All the volunteers, hundreds of them, the fans, thousands of them, showing up to see these exciting ladies burn the course. And to uh, top it all off, charity back to the community. We were able, together with the BC Children's Hospital Foundation, to raise $1.8 million for the hospital. And I know the hospital will accept the check. But I'm not sure our champion will. She's here for fame, building her legacy, and the trophy, I guess. Our champion, Lydia Ko, and I'm going to give her the, term, the, the trophy with Diane Dunlop. just done some gym work or something. <laughs> yeah, firstly, I'd like to thank CN and all the sponsors for, you know, helping out and sponsoring this event. Thank you to Vancouver Golf Club. This is an amazing golf club, and I'd love to come back anytime. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank the LPGA Tour, um, I guess, for organizing this event, and it's real an honor to play on an LPGA Tour event and playing against and with the world's best players. Um, especially, I'd like to thank G.I. Shin and Stacey Lewis for, you know, giving me a great match, and you guys are awesome to play with. I 
I'd like to thank all the supporters and fans. Um, I was so surprised to see so many people cheering for me and the, um, also to the other players. It's Canada and to have that much support, it was awesome to see and especially like you saw on the last hole, I got some adrenaline going. <laughs> Yeah, I'd like to thank all the volunteers. You guys have done awesome work so we wouldn't get bombarded by the supporters. <laughs> um, thank you to my caddy, Brian. Um, you're awesome, and you know, you sometimes say sorry for misreading the putts, but everyone makes mistakes. I do. <laughs> So no need to say th sorry, and I'm really thankful to have you as my caddy. And also one of the volunteers was Caroline, who's Brian's wife. <laughs> yeah, um, Leslie, I'd like to thank my mom. You know, she's always there to support. Two weeks ago at the U.S. Amateur, she was my caddy, but, you know, today she was, you know, being the spectator, looking and seeing if I'm doing everything right, and hopefully I have. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank two other people, Joe and Brent, the Stellard family. Uh, they're actually from New Zealand, and it was great to you know, have support, but also people back home supporting you here live was awesome as well. And <laughs> there she is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, they were wearing black and white yesterday, and they stood out. I think it was just, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, and I, you know, thank all the players that I played with the whole week, and I hope everyone have a safe travel. Thank you. Thank you, Lydia. We're very proud to have you as our National Open Champion. And we look forward to seeing you at Royal Mayor, Fair, Royal Mayor Fair Golf Club in Edmonton next year for the 2013 CN Canadian Women's Open. Thank you to everyone. Well, again, just a real joy. I told you you'd find her charming, Judy. And being with you, Judy, as a 26-time winner, Hall of Famer, a Canadian Open champion yourself in 1977, and one who's done a, a world of good for the game, not as a player, but as a broadcaster, you got to sit in on something neat for four days here. Yeah, um, thank you very much. I love I love sitting sitting next to you and um, calling golf. And I didn't know what we would be calling the golf of uh, someone that I now believe we're going to see for a very long time. And uh, I cannot imagine the extraordinary things uh, this 15-year-old will do when she's 21. Marlene Stewart Street uh, medal to go along with the trophy, uh, and she was a wonderful golfer who won everywhere in the world, Marlene did, including two senior U.S. championships, but Marlene was a Canadian amateur champion. She was the British women's amateur champion, the Australian women's amateur champion, and that's, again, this course held the tournament in 1988 when Sally Little represented an international as a South Korean, or South African, I should say, and now South Korea and New Zealand. It's just really, really a special day. Well, you don't always get to see something um, this important in our game. You don't always get to see something that, in fact, um, makes the history books. And, you know, I don't think in my lifetime, surely in my lifetime, doing television and watching these events so closely that I'm going to see a younger player than this um, win on the professional tour. Gail, you were there stride for stride. Your thoughts with Elliot. Ron, you're right. Gail, you had the best view. What stood out to you watching her today? Wow, everything. Um, you know, what an incredible honor to, to be a part of it. such a historic day for CN, for the CN Canadian Women's Open, for Vancouver, for Lydia Ko. Um, you know, the, flood, the ball never left the flag today, and I think that, that her demeanor and her poise and just her ability to play the game as well as she played it under incredible pressure um, in front of two of the world's best players, the number two in the world and a former number one, uh, was in inspiring. I had goosebumps all day long. You know, yesterday, Brian Alexander said the thing that impressed her most was her routine. She kept calm. No matter when something went bad, she went back to her routine. Did you notice that too? She did. Um, she maintained it very well. And on occasion, you'd see her step off to the other side of the tee box. 
take a deep breath and sort of collect herself and then off to do her business again. Um, she did it very well. Great job today, Graham. Oh, it was my pleasure. My absolute pleasure. All right, thanks a lot, Gail. Let's go back to Ron. Ron? Well done, Gail and Elliot. And Brian Alexander was a nice touch, too, to have a club member, the 63-year-old caddy, uh, join in this celebration. That You know, it's funny. She said that he misread a couple putts. <laughs> You'll never hear the end of that. You know that in the locker room. But the fact that I remember Helen Alperson just got the line, sorry is not an option in golf. And there was nothing for those two to apologize for. You think he'll play the course now and see if he can drive it exactly where Lydia Ko drove it? Totally. BC uh, amateur champion in the footsteps of Don Coe Jones, of Gail Graham, of Lisa Walters, of Jennifer Wyatt, and I should mention of Gail Harvey Moore, of right here at the Vancouver Golf Clubs in our Canadian Hall of Fame, her son, Heritage Minister James Moore. Finally, thanks to Dave Kennedy, Superintendent, and all the people, Randy Smith, Brent Goff, Mr. Batchelor, could go on and on. Vancouver Golf Club, you gave us nine days of your time for history. Thanks. For all of us, so long from the CN Canadian Women's Open.